evening and welcome to El Oso Fumar Takes. This is our 143rd take live from the HF Barcelona studios of Euless, Texas. I'm your host, Barry Duplissy, as always, and I'm so proud, so pleased, and so privileged to be with you all tonight. This is going to be an awesome show, a fantastic show, a second time guest with a new meaning, new look, and new everything almost. But you're going to have to stick around to find that out. So I'm really excited to welcome our guests. But before I get to formal introductions, we do have to thank the people that make this show possible. And that, of course, is our sponsors. And tonight's show is sponsored by Drew Estate. Drew Estate announced just last week that they will be donating $50,000 to Operation Cigars for Warriors during its virtual Barn Smoker Live event, which will be broadcasted directly from the Florida Sun Grown Farm in Claremont, Florida on Drew Estate's Facebook page on November 14th. So mark your calendars. That's two weeks from today, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. All adults are invited. So due to the COVID-19, uh, Drew Estate actually canceled the five barn smoker events that they have been planned on for 2020 for in Connecticut, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Louisiana, and Florida. Instead, Drew Estate was actually decided to bring the barn to the people, announcing it's a Barn Smoker Goodwill Act, through which Drew Estate has fully refunded all barn smoker ticket holders, sent all the swag to everybody that had, was already going to participate, but has now opened up a virtual barn smoker to open to all adults free of charge. So check out the live virtual barn smoker event on November 14th, right on their Facebook page, Drew Estate Cigar, and you get to participate in some amazing virtual events and with proceeds going to, including the $50,000 that Drew Estate will be donating to uh, Operation Cigars for Warriors. What a fantastic, fantastic event. Also sponsoring tonight's show is Oveja Negra Brands, four unique companies who share a passion to provide innovative cigars for the next generation of cigar enthusiasts. Black Lady Treated and Crimpy, Black Work Studio, Dissident, and Emilio are combining premium tobacco with an artisanal touch. Oveja Negra, where art and tobacco collide. Join the flock and visit ovejanegracigars.com to learn more. And welcome everyone to our 143rd take. This is an awesome, awesome opportunity to welcome in our guest, for tonight. So without further ado, brought to you by United Cigars. Smoke one today and start living united. Mr. Jason Lois of Veritas Cigars. Jason, welcome back. How are you doing tonight? I am freezing my butt off, but I'm very thankful. Uh, I'm very blessed and very humbled to be on your show once more. So thank you so much for, uh, for having me. I always say that you are the most humble person in the industry always very thankful for your guest and i am very thankful that you had me on this evening well it's uh it's my pleasure uh to welcome you back jason i mean a lot has changed a lot has changed since we talked uh last time you know uh, like you mentioned before the show started this is actually a year almost to the day um yeah. where i had john we talked about some some fun stuff the interesting uh i'm going to use a word to kind of kind of uh segue into uh what we'll be talking about later on but lifestyle that you've led over over your uh, over your career in the cigar industry so um and but now there's some really new fun and interesting stuff to talk about so i'm really really excited to be uh, to sit down with you tonight and chat with you about those things so nor normally jason this is the time where i talk about what we're going to be smoking tonight i am going to be lighting up here in just a moment uh, but we're actually going to save that for later so uh because that actually has a lot to do with what's been going on with you so um so I, I'll, I'll kick things off here um, with you, the fact that you just got back to the States. You've actually been living in Nicaragua with her for the last two months. Um, sure. And uh, we're going to be getting into why, but I kind of want to know just what that, you know, I mean, elephant in the room, uh, pan, international pandemic is going on. So what, there is. <laughs> yeah, what was it like living in Nicaragua for the last <laughs> couple of months during these, uh, as we continue to say daily, unprecedented times? Right. Um, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was uh, I was really nervous. I, I was excited, you know, to be able to, to get an opportunity to to go to Nicaragua, to, to be in Esteli. But um, obviously, like you said, we're in unprecedented times. And, uh, you know, with COVID and the, the rise of, of the pandemic and, and it daily uh, reaching new uh, levels as far as how many people have tested positive, how many people have gotten sick, um, the death uh, toll raising uh, as we're trying to, you know, go to a third world country. Um, I was nervous. I, I was I was scared to death um, in the airport, scared to death in the airplane, um, and then even scared 
uh, to test when, when I was there. And, and then it's, um, it really decreased greatly um, once I just saw people living their life. You know, um, the, the average income in, in our factory, as well as other factories, uh, is about $200, $220 a month. Um, and then when you kind of put that into perspective, as far as they don't really have a, a parachute, so to speak, um, they're either going to die from starvation and not being able to, to feed and, and clothe and, and all the things for their family, um, or, or possibly get sick. Um, so it's like, what do you do? What, what, what road do you choose? Um, how do you provide for your family? Um, so once I just saw people living their life, like we were protecting ourselves, you know, we were, uh, you know, wearing masks and, and washing and sanitizing as much as possible, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, people are just living their life. And, uh, I just got down there and started living my life, living my life in Nicaragua. It was, it was great. It was fantastic. Saw so many, many great things, um, met so many great people, um, was able to uh, spend a lot of time in, in our factory as well as others. And I was blessed with those um, experiences as well. A lot of friends in the industry were, were very, uh, had, the, had the arms open wide to, uh, to let us come into their factories and, and check it out too, so. That's, that's really awesome, man. And what, I mean, like, I, I, I gotta be honest, I'm really encouraged in, in two different ways to kind of hear your answer. Cause like, on one hand, like I, I, I mean, I, I, I've, I've, I've admitted this before. I'm, I'm really, I've been really nervous and, and everything about what's going on a lot more than, you know, I mean, it, it started off like I was okay. And then, you know, it's, you know, it, this has kept going and kept going. And so, you know, I've, I've been more and more nervous and, you know, apprehensive about a lot of different things, just personally, you know, I have a, like you said, I have a family to take care of as well. And so, uh, I've been blessed to be able to work from home and, 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 and then, you know, I have a podcast where I get to talk to great people like yourself. And so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm certainly grateful for everything, but you know, a lot of people in the industry have, have been going out and I mean, they, you, you have to, you have to, business has to continue in some way. And, you know, and, and it's just, you know, there have been really, there have been people that have been really cavalier about it and that makes me extremely nervous right. um so um and it but it also it makes me also feel like i'm missing something like there's something like i'm just not getting um and so but to hear someone else who was like really admittedly like yeah i was really nervous too i'm like okay makes me feel a little bit more human <laughs> like i like so that that's good but that was so great that you got to be able to 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 be yourself again, to kind of be what was normal, you know, normal and stuff. So, um, you know, we talked a little about this a little bit before the show as well. Your you, you, your girlfriend actually came down as well to to visit yeah, for a while. Did. So that yeah. must have been really nice to to show her. You know, you know, you've been in cigars for a long time, but this was a lot different. But it was, must have been really cool to take her to the roots of everything that you love about this industry. Right, and she was able to. Uh, now she's been to some events and stuff in the past, and and able to uh to see me do my thing you know work in a room just going and, and kind of trying to educate people and and kind of uh pour into to um cigar enthusiasts my, my passion you know um my passion for art my passion for cigars um all together in one so she's been able to do that on a, on a smaller scale um but going to a, a third world country again during a pandemic uh that is a whole nother dynamic uh to the to the trip you know uh, i'll give you a, a little example i'll tell you a story when um so i was already down in nicaragua and and working in the factory i actually graffiti painted painted the inside of of our office there in, in the factory it shows fields and veritas logo and um in the office it's actually dark time in the fields like right like the office is right in the middle of a field with mountainscape and the moon. And then on the other side, it has the sun and the, the mountain range and the, and the tobacco fields and the, and the barn, curing barn. So I was doing all of that. Um, but to get back to the story is, uh, she was she was coming down and and uh, of course she, she dresses really nice. Just like, I, I think that I try to dress really nice on a day to day, although I'm, I'm freezing right now. So I'm, you know, in a, in a sweatshirt, <laughs> sweater and, and I, you can't see, I have a, 
like a little like a little fur blanket down here trying to keep my legs warm because I'm outside. There's nothing wrong with dressing appropriate, Jason. No, you know, right. it's, it's fine. Right. Don't knock me. I had to put my I had to put my fedora on though. There you go. But uh when we were talking before she came down, I was like, you, you need to blend, you, you need to tone it down a little bit and kinda kinda blend in so that you don't like stick out like a soy thumb. And she texts me from the airport and she's like, I'm not blending. <laughs> she's in line <laughs> with, you know, 200 plus um, Nicaraguan people get trying to get back, you know, home. Um, and uh, she's in a, she's in a dress and, and heels and, um, oh, well, it was just, it was really funny <laughs> in a funny way. And uh, so she had a little, little um, trip ordeal, but we got her finally to uh, Managua and then, you know, to Esteli to where we were, where we were living. So it was, it was great. It's fantastic to have her down there and to go through all the experiences, to have her sit uh, with bancheros and roleros and and to actually show her how to uh, to bunch and, and roll a cigar. It was it was fun. It was good times. It's awesome. It's got to be. It, it. I imagine it was something like when when that was something that when uh, Coop and I went down to a factory for the first time together. Like that was something he said that he just enjoyed just as much to be able to see that through my eyes for the first time, me seeing that whole thing experience and everything. Was that, w w can you kind of empathize with that? Was that kind of the similar way with you seeing the way she reacted to everything? And Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it was, um, it was refreshing in a way because she had never seen those things. Um, so yeah, to see it through her eyes, that's, that's a great way to, to put it. Um, to to see her have those experiences that uh, that I hold near and dear to my heart. Um, now, of course, I've had those experiences in in the Dominican before, um, going you know quarterly down to the DR to be in the factory and go through you know pachuches and blending and, and all of that kind of stuff to to learn. Um, I was I was also in the same mindset. And she was able to experience that through me too, because this is a new country for me. Um, I'd never been to Nicaragua. Um, oh, okay. Albeit, albeit I've never uh, been to Nicaragua. Okay. Never been to Nicaragua. So, albeit a uh, cigar manufacturing country, uh, you know, they do things differently. Um, you know, the, the city is vastly different than, you know, Tamboril versus Esteli. You know, it's, it's just a lot of differences, a lot of similarities, but. Uh, yeah, it was it was great. So there were a lot of things. shorts. Oh yeah, yeah. Because that was the thing in I, the Dominican. That was the thing in the Dominican was like it, culturally, like men don't wear shorts in the DR. So, like I, I was wearing jeans in the middle of you know like Santiago. So it was it was. Right. I mean, you uh, could have, but but did I come on there? You know, you know me a little. No, bit yeah, of course, no, yeah, yeah. I know, I know you were probably styling. So we're yeah, we'll we'll we can do that. So, so yeah, well, okay, well, not even for a second. Like what what was the what was a day in the life of the of the wardrobe of uh, of the the infamous Jason Lois wardrobe for a uh, you know cigar factory walking? Well, well, let me preface this first. Um, I was in Miami with Ashley uh, for her birthday, uh, and then Chris calls and says, "Hey, we got a charter flight going into Nicaragua. You know, pack your bags." I'm like, "I'm already in Miami." Um, and I was, I'm dressed for and packed for South Beach, not for Esteli, Nicaragua. So vastly different ends of the of the spectrum. So I had, um, you know, of course, my, my wardrobe was was, you know, Gucci loafers and slacks and <laughs> fedoras and you know stuff like that. It wasn't uh, it, it wasn't what I needed to have. <laughs> in, in Nicaragua. So, I, I was not blending as well, so I, I can't put it on. <laughs> so when Chris saw you for the first time, what, what did like the way you were dressed, and everything, the clothes you brought? What did what did he say? He just kind of shook his head. And just <laughs> knows, he knows he, he knows what to expect. Yeah, I was gonna say he knows he knows what the kind of man you are. So, yeah. Um, so this, speaking of what kind of man you are, that kind of jumps us into. So last week we had a grand announcement here on Ellis from Martiques. Moving forward, we were going to be showcasing. I was going to be asking my guest ahead of time um, to and to select a charity or nonprofit that they would like to bring attention and raise money and awareness for. 
And so, uh, Jason, you're actually the first guest. So last week I picked I picked the charity, and but you're actually my first guest that I was asking uh, for a uh, for a charity or nonprofit that you wanted to bring awareness to. So um, uh, you chose uh, Autism Speaks. So um, I was really excited about this because I think it's a fantastic organization, and it's 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 a you know it, it's something that actually doesn't have. I think a lot of people are aware. Of, of autism, but they're not really aware of autism, like what, what it goes into, what it entails and everything. Um, I was really shocked to find out this organization is only 15 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, but you guys can donate at autismspeaks.org. Um, there's also a link on the, uh, the ads for, if you scroll back in our Facebook page, you can hit the donate button and all proceeds go directly to Autism Speaks. But um, I'm gonna go give a little bit of a background here in a second, but Jason, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious, why, why, did you pick, uh, why did you pick Autism Speaks uh, to, to highlight this week? Well, when you asked me to pick the charity, I was thinking, I was just like, wow, what, what charity have I been introduced to that uh, that I think maybe needs some recognition, needs a, a different eye, different eyes on it. And um, I was first introduced to Autism Speaks um, because of, I, l- let me preface this: I, I love to play golf. Playing golf with my father gives us that opportunity, that, that bonding time out on the golf course. Um, so I've been a huge golf fan for more than half my life. And um, Ernie Els was a huge advocate for Autism Speaks when, when, the, when the organization first came to fruition. And because he has children affected with autism. Mm-hmm. And um, then I started, after you asked to, to come up with an organization, I started looking into it a little bit more. And I had no idea that one in 54 children is impacted by autism. And right. I think that that's a huge number when you when you think about that. Uh, and I just, I believe that more people need to kind of, not only Autism Speaks, but just other organizations. And I think it's phenomenal that you're adding this segment to your podcast. It just kind of enriches all of the things that you're already talking about. You're talking about people, you're talking about, you know, their life in, in cigar industry, their, their passion and love, but but also you're, you're adding this giving back um, component to it, which uh, I think it's amazing. I, I think it's great. And, you know, kudos to you um, for, uh, for trying to, you know, bring, bring some attention to uh, some organizations that are definitely not talked about um, on a day in day out conversation in the cigar industry. I really appreciate that, Jason. I'm really, I'm like I said, I'm really excited about launching this on my show, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to talk to, uh, talk about uh, people's passions outside of the cigar industry. We spend a lot of time sp- talking about cigars, um, but you know, I had um, I had Coop on my show last week, and he he actually was a really big inspiration for this because long ago he's kind of he's kind of tagged my show as the the, the podcast that kind of humanizes the cigar industry, and I've I was really humbled by that and I've kind of run with it as well. And so I, I, and I've always looked for a way to give back and this is just, you know, it's kind of kismet um, the way it all came together and the inspirations that I had and, and to be able to do this, I'm already really touched um, because uh, to be able to do this because autism, it, it affects, it affects so many people in different ways, whether you have ch- a child that is autistic or not, you probably, again, one in 54, you just said it. Like, I mean, someone probably, you know, has a child with the with autism um or you know it's 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 got it it's it affects people in different ways and you know i was you know this past year on my day job i was actually able um to become i was blessed to become co-workers with uh, a gentleman that i work with his name is dan um and he's uh just one of the finest gentlemen i've i've ever had the privilege of meeting just a really a hard worker a good dude um just a you know you, you called me humble earlier. I mean, he's fantastically humble um, and um, just an incredible individual. And him and his wife um, have two two children and his son, Tyus, is autistic. And so when you mentioned that you wanted to do Autism Speaks, I immediately thought of Tyus and I was like, I'm just, this is perfect. I'm gonna make a donation to Autism Speaks in, in, in my coworker's son's honor uh, to, as a way to kind of kick this off. And I'm just 
really, really excited um, to bring attention to this because again, like you said, one in 54, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty big, that's a, that's a pretty substantial number when you think about how many children are born, um, you know, born in this country every year and, and one in 54 of them are affected by this. And it's not just obviously the children, it's their families as well. And uh, so I'm really excited about this. Um, and that's a great thing about the organization that not only are they trying to, you know, raise money for um, research for the, the actual individual that is impacted by autism, but they're also uh, funding uh, education for the families. Um, and, you know, through research, they've learned that if you detect autism early in that child's, you know, life, you know, two, three years old, that they can drastically improve their quality of life. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, what, what better way to, to give back than to impact people in a positive way and to, you know, improve their quality of life. And I, I just think that that's a, that's a great cause. It's a great organization. And um, I, I'm going to donate to Autism Speaks. Uh, so I, I encourage anybody, if they have the means necessary to, to be able to do so. It, and it doesn't have to be a big donation. No. No. Every little bit helps. Absolutely. And, and that's kind of like what I was going about, like, you know, asking each week, asking my, you know, my audience to donate to all these causes and everything. You know, that's no, I, I realize that money doesn't grow in trees and everything, but um, I'm hoping that, you know, the, the stories that we tell and the organizations that we bring attention to will, you know, inspire um, people to, to absolutely donate to Autism Speaks. I'll donate to a cause that they, that they find in line by, or maybe this will, you know, in some small way, Jason, maybe this will inspire, you know, our, you know, my audience to, you know, pick up and run with something they are passionate about. Maybe we haven't mentioned, maybe someone will say, you know what, I, I you know, that doesn't really speak to me, but this does, and they can go right. and, 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 and so, you know, it's all about kind of improving each other. And so I think uh, I, I, it'll do, I, it'll do the world some good. And you know what, in, yeah. in, in today's world, you know what? We, we need a little bit more of that. So I'm, I'm all for it. So, Absolutely. so if, if you guys yeah. feel so inclined, I put it in the, I put it in the comments there, uh, but you can donate at uh, autismspeaks.org. Um, and uh, there's a great donate button there. And um, you can donate to a fantastic organization that's, uh, as Jason said, is, is ed working towards education, working towards early diagnosis, working towards a cure. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, it, it, that'd be, that'd be incredible to be a part right. of, uh, to be a part of that. So uh, that is part of their 10 year goal is to find a better understanding of the causes, find working towards a cure, um, early, even earlier diagnosis than you were talking about, Jason, they wanna, they wanna be able to diagnose before the age of two, uh, right. which would be, like you said, with children improving it when that's diagnosed that early, imagine how much it will be more improved if it's diagnosed even earlier. So, um, yeah. What a, what a, what a, I do what agree was. what you uh, what you said earlier as far as like okay well maybe autism speaks doesn't speak to the the individuals watching your podcast um, but maybe it, it speaks to them in a way of like all right I'm going to maybe they don't have an organization that they're passionate about but now now they research organizations that they can donate to and you're you're benefiting those organizations in that way so I think it's it's a more global thing than, than just Autism Speaks or, or any future podcast where they, they pick a, another organization. Mm -hmm. it, it's more global than, than just this one organization. And I think what you're doing is fantastic. I commend you. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Jason. Really appreciate it. And appreciate it. Uh, cheers to you, man, for, uh, for uh, yeah. being the first, the first to pick. So cheers. I'm, I'm drinking some Bull Buffalo Trace. What, do you, what did you pour yourself tonight? I have a little, um, a little Willett family estates uh, from my, from my guy uh, Drew Colesveen at, uh, at Willett down the down the road in Barstown. Um, so, I uh, I thoroughly enjoy uh, that distillery as well as Drew. He's he's the cigar guy himself, and I, I've spent uh, many many days at the, at his house in his personal cigar lounge. Um, and, uh, so it's just made me, uh, I'm definitely a fanboy uh, of Willett and I, 
I look for all of those little uh, releases that they have throughout the year. Uh, awesome. Absolutely. I, I, I am a big fan of Willet. Um, that's really awesome that you have become friends with them so that now you and I have to become even better friends than we are, Jason, so that uh, I can get the hookup on that. I think that's, I think that's only fair, but uh, it's not even just the WFE stuff. It's, uh, you know, Johnny drum often gets overlooked and, and, uh, I saw a very old Bardstown in, in the liquor store just the other day, the bottled and bond, um, up for $20 and, you know, Bart's often, good. Bart's it, good. Too often these bottles are are being bought and flipped on secondary market for quadruple the the MSRP of the bottle, and uh, I don't really get into that. I I like to find the rare stuff from Willet, but uh, all the other things like like um, you know the pappies and stuff like that are, are kind of lost on me. Um, but I, I really do the juice that that Drew produces is is phenomenal. That's wonderful. Well, that leads us in tonight's, to tonight's major point. It's brought to you by Wood Butcher Maine, as always, introducing durable and attractive wooden creations to your kitchen, backyard grill, and home using native Maine wood and other exotic wood species. Uh, wood Butcher Maine's products include butcher box, uh, cutting boards, coasters, grill glade cleaners, and of course, the LLC of whom our favorite, the Red Oak cigar ashtray and cocktail coaster plus many more the wood butcher mains team's passion for food the pine tree state and craftsmanship of the highest quality show in absolutely every piece visit woodbutchermain.com yes that's woodbutchermain.com to explore the current collection so tonight's major point is talking about all the changes there's been a lot of changes as we talked about jason since the last time we spoke and that was only a year ago there's a lot going on in your life so just kick things off you uh, we're named the CEO of Veritas Cigars. So now you're partnering with Chris Weber at Veritas Cigar Company. Right. So yeah. really excited. I, when I when I first got a whiff of, the, of this announcement, I was so ecstatic uh, for you because I think it just seems like a great opportunity. But why don't you tell us how this how this came about? Like, uh, you know, from where we were a year ago to now you're CEO running a, a, a fine boutique cigar company. I'm really excited to hear about this. Right, um, you know, I've uh, I've been I've been blessed uh, with an opportunity to uh, to really grow a, a small boutique cigar manufacturer, and uh, you know, last year when we talked, I was the the buyer for uh, for a large uh, retail chain here in, in uh, Kentucky doing the Derby. We talked about Derby, and right? Well, we we talked about the Cigar Smoking World Championships and stuff like that. Um, but now um, my focus is, is Veritas and, uh, you know, really kind of honing what, uh, what Veritas has done in the past and then, then growing for the future. I'm really excited. We, we actually started back in June um, is when my official start date was with, with Chris and, and Veritas. Um, but we kind of kept it under wraps because... Uh, we really wanted to get to the factory and work on blends that had already been produced underneath the Veritas umbrella and to really reintroduce those into the market. And I'm so excited for those cigars to, to be in the market and to be distributed you know, throughout the States. It's, it's an exciting and, and fun time, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Now, Veritas is a is a boutique brand that's that's kind of gone under you know a lot of a lot of changes over the years. It was founded in 2011, as as you you uh, corrected me on before for the show, thankfully. But I will fall on the sword. I couldn't remember if it was 11 or 12. You you, you told me that it was 2011. So over the past nine years, it, it's 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 changed a lot uh, in terms of like production and obviously cigars and everything. Um, so speaking of production, so like, so now, you know, you guys in the past had worked with Takasa Tabaculero, uh, the Las Lavas factory, which I'm a big fan of in the DR. Uh, but now you guys actually have your own factory, um, right. in Nicaragua, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Tabaculero Nuevo Nica in Esteli, Nicaragua. So, um, we are actually producing our, our own cigars as well as private label projects and everything like that too. So um, we're, we're full speed ahead. That's awesome. So when, when was the, 
was the was the factory just just open this summer or has it been in production has it been working for it was, a while it was, or? Just, it was just opened oh wow. um, so we're you know we were when i was painting the factory we were we were getting everything set up um making sure the aging room and everything the bodega you know there was there was a lot of work to be done when we were down there um and you know i have a lot of a lot of images from from all of that that uh, I will be slowly introducing and, and showing, you know, the the behind the scenes, um, because too often that doesn't that gets overshadowed. It's more like, hey, this is our product. This is what we're making. This is why we're making it. But um, too often, you know, how we got to that point gets overlooked. And so I want to bring some education and, and bring some eyes to. All right, well, here was the shell of a factory and all of the all of the things that we had to go through to to get that up and running and then you know going through test blends and and you know reblending revamping some of the lines that were that were out um and then you know we all we all know that they have to sit of course <laughs> we gotta, you know make sure that the, the cigars are ready um I'm sure you saw one of the posts that I had that was in the aging room and it was like, Shh, you know, the cigars are sleeping because you know, that's <laughs> what they're doing for a while until they, until they tell you that they're ready to, to come to market. So that's the phase that we're actually in right now. And I, I'm literally chopping at the bit, um, wanting to, to get these cigars uh, so I can, you know, bring them to, to people such as yourself, cigar enthusiasts, you know, across the nation. Um, People are hitting me up daily. When can I get these cigars? When can I get these cigars? I remember 412, um, you know, and, and I still have an original box. And, you know, I actually did a, an event in Pittsburgh this last weekend. And, and people were so receptive um, and just eager to, uh, to see the, the cigars when, when they actually start hitting retail shelves. I, I remember I've, I've only smoked, I only smoked it once, but I remember the 412 and that was a fantastic cigar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I smoked it really, really good. So, I, I mean, so you, you mentioned tweaking everything. So like, are you, did, were there's, was there a lot of reblending that went into some of these Icon Veritas cigars or? No, it was just, it was really just, uh, you know, tobacco is, is, you know, we grow it year in, year out, harvest yeah. change, whatever, dry seasons, wet seasons, what have you. Um, so we just had to, we wanted to make sure that that we, we were creating um, still had the the same um, consistency as that it did back you know years years past. So it's like taking all those blends and kind of making tweaking them maybe a little bit here or there, uh, whether it was you know like a, a half a leaf in the filler or what have you, and then making sure that we could provide that consistent product um, to the, the consumer. So those people that did smoke 412 back in the day, the, the people that did smoke, you know, Torch, um, people that smoked Ver, uh, Veritas Maduro, three blends, um, make sure that the, the cigar that they enjoyed years ago is going to be the cigar that they're going to enjoy this year and, and years to come. Now, now three blends is one of those cigars. So like barber poles in general are always one of those cigars that are, to me, are truly like hit or miss right and that, that seems kind of really on the nose because like you know you're getting two cigars experience you know when you're smoking a barbecue obviously right. but um to me they're they're really hit or miss um when you were when you were talking to chris about the production of three blends now and, and the full transparency i haven't smoked that cigar but i remember the 412 like i said outstanding i really enjoyed that blend so i'm really excited that you guys are we're hunkering down on on, on that one but when it comes to a barber pole and bringing that to market, Jason, like what was some of the strategy that you and Chris talked about to make sure that, um, you know, that that kind of, and, and I don't think I'm alone in that hit or miss kind of, you know, perception of barber poles um, that you make sure that obviously the cigar is, is good and everything, but you guys are hitting on the fact that this isn't, this isn't the dreaded G word. It's not a gimmick. This is right. something you guys are really putting a lot into. Right. Right. Well, first, you know, that, that wrapper is super involved and it's, it's a very difficult cigar to, to roll. So it was finding the Rolero within our factory or the group of Roleros in our factory that could actually complete that, that task. 
Um, and once we, we got those few Roleros that, that we could hone them in on, on what we were looking for, both cosmetically and, and with the, the blend makeup and how it smoked and combustion and all of that, uh, it was you know, it was a little bit of a trial by far. Trial by far. Do you like that? Trial by fire. There you go. That's, that's a Kentucky accent coming out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm from Wisconsin originally, but I've been here long enough. They, that's uh, they call me a damn Yankee because uh, I came here and I didn't go back home. So. And you even said you even said the term damn Yankee with that little bit of a drawl too. That's even that's yeah, why it's funnier. <laughs> but yeah, and it, it was that way. Um, with all of the products, it's just uh, trying to to hone in on what what it was in the past and and maintaining that integrity. That was the word that I was looking for. Maintaining that integrity that was a cigar that people enjoyed before to mm-hmm. ensure that they're going to enjoy it ne- uh, again. So this is really exciting. I I I I couldn't. I I knew that the factory was new. I just didn't know it was that new that you guys were just launching it and everything. So like I get to ask some really interesting questions now like so what kind of goes into i mean like you said that that integrity right so that means bringing in that means bringing in some really fantastic people obviously you have a great foundation with you and chris there but what you know the roleros and the boncheros and stuff like how does how do you how does one go and start a factory how do you find these i mean obviously you're nestle i mean it's the hotbed of the cigar industry right now so right. i'm sure there's a there's obviously experience there like but how do you go about a getting this experience and like how do you even interview for something like that i'm like i'm really i'm really curious here all right well we have our uh, our factory manager who is phenomenal and he actually did a lot of of the legwork before chris and i got down to esteli and and you know we were getting people and interviewing and all of, all of that process um while we were there but there was a lot of of intro work and, and getting people into the factory to you know showcase their abilities and stuff like that because that you know okay. it's an art form right it's not right. different than, than the paintings that i do it, it's just a, a different medium so um a lot of that was done pre pre me but then also there was tweaks to that as well not only to the blends but then tweaking you know what what couples actually worked better together or what couples were, were able to to roll certain cigars or vitolas um, uh, better than better than others, okay. uh, and realizing that and, and being able to to be there on site and say, okay, this is how we want it, and, and control production from from jump. Um, so that was that was real vital to to uh, what I believe will be our success in in the future. Is, is being there in those very integral times, trying to, to build that foundation, like you said, and, and to move forward. That's, that's really awesome. I, yeah, that's, that, that's just true. Like, that just never even, I mean, obviously these factories had to start somewhere. Like, some are, old, you know, old as, you know, old as I'll get. I mean, we we're talking decades and decades of, the, of right. when they were founded. I mean, this is, this is brand spanking new, everything. So, um, you know, so it was everything down to to the rolling tables and chairs, getting them painted, setting up the bodega in the aging room. Um, all of those things were were processes that we went through when we were down in Estelle. That's really awesome. So we've actually got a question from the chat that kind of gonna, goes along with what we're talking about, Jason, and 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 that was that. Uh, when you know Chris had mentioned that he was significantly going to increase the quality of his tobacco stock, um, so how how did how did you guys achieve that? Are you are you finding new avenues to purchase tobacco from? Um, do you, did, is it just more experience on selecting the right tobacco? Like what what kind of goes into you know increasing the quality of of the tobacco? Because you guys you guys aren't growing right, and that's right. We, we are not vertically integrated. Now, those are things that we've talked about that we want to do in the future. But you know, we have to we have to crawl, then walk, then run, right? Yeah. So that's more towards the walking and running part. Um, so in this crawling phase, you know, we're being very selective of the tobaccos that we purchase. But then also we're growing relationships with with people. Obviously, I want to keep some of this close to the chest. Of course, no, um, of course. But uh, those relationships were, were really founded and started um, while we were in Esteli. 
there were main there were relationships that Chris had maintained uh, where he was buying tobacco before, but now we're able to buy tobacco on a larger scale. Okay. And that will only allow us to again maintain the integrity of the of the blends and the brands because now we're not buying small quantities that could be altered one way or another through growing seasons and what have you. Mm -hmm. But now that we have a larger stock of tobacco, we know that that tobacco is going into these specific blends and we can continue to produce those day in, day out. Okay. Well, we're going to go into the line a little bit deeper here in just a second, but I, you know, you, you sent me some cigars and we're going to be talking about the one we're smoking tonight here in a set in a few moments, but I, 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 you sent me some of the torch. Okay. So you mm -hmm. sent me the Connecticut, the Habano and the Maduro. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm looking at this Connecticut right now and, and, and I'm going to play the dangerous game here, Jason, I'm going to assume something I'm assuming because of the coloring, it's Ecuadorian Connecticut shade. Is that correct? I can't slide one past you. Can I? <laughs> Um, you are so, correct. so, okay. So uh, the, the, seriously, this is utterly fascinating to me. So like, you know, what, you know, when you guys were, when you and Chris, or, or if it was just Chris, were, were selecting the type of Ecuadorian Connecticut shade, like, like what went into that process to make sure that, that because this, to me, this is a little, not, this is not just a little bit darker than what I would normally associate with Ecuadorian Connecticut. It actually have, it actually has even a little bit more of a darker brown hue to it. Um, so I, obviously that was intentional by you guys, um, but um, I'm curious as to, you know, like, you know, what's that process like of making sure that, that you're, when you're purchasing, now that you're buying in larger volume, as you said, make sure you're getting consistent along that huge scope of, I mean, what, what goes into that whole process there? Well, Chris had some of the original uh, Torch Connecticut's as well as the, the other blinds that we had. So really it was, it was trying to align what was original with what the availability of tobacco and mm -hmm. then trying to match that um, so that we could we could really focus on buying the tobaccos that, that matched not only appearance cosmetically but then smokeability right mm -hmm. the, the taste and profile of the cigars that, that various house had in the past and then again being able to to reiterate those those same taste profiles and coloring for the for the future okay. so it was a pretty it was a pretty in-depth process um and, and I, I i learned a tremendous amount not only from from chris from from our roleros and bocheros from our blender um it was it was an amazing process from the from the people that we were buying tobacco from I was learning learning every day i just shut up and let other people speak that are way smarter about tobacco um forgot more about tobacco than than what i know <laughs> so and and if and i'm correct if correct me if i'm wrong on the habano um that's also ecuadorian as well that's an ecuadorian habano correct correct okay. yes sir I did not know that by looking at it, that was that was that was sheer memory um <laughs> yeah. um I'm not that good. Um, and then the, and then the, the Maduro, what, what, uh, what, what varietal is the Maduro wrapper? Connecticut Broadleaf. Connecticut Broadleaf. Okay. That must've been incredible. So we've, everyone's been talking right in the face about how difficult Connecticut Broadleaf is to procure right now. So is this old stock that he was able to procure or did he find an, did you guys find a new source where you were able to get? We have a, we have a new source. Oh my gosh. I we're able to. Hard. We were able to uh, procure uh, enough to uh, to create and, and keep on creating. That's wonderful. We, we we made some great partners, and and Chris already had some great partners. So between both of those, we were able to to really hone in on on again what was in the past, and then bringing it into the future. I, I want to come back to the torch. Uh, in a second, but I do want to touch on a couple of the other, uh, the other couple of the blends that, you know, have put Veritas on the map over the years. And of course that we already talked about the 412 and the three blends, of course, but there is a, there is a, a fourth brand, so to speak, the, the, the Veritas, uh, uh, the, just, it's simply still named Veritas, Veritas, right? Veritas Maduro. Maduro. And that's a Brazilian, uh, out of Perica, right? Well, it's Brazilian. Okay. So again, we had to kind of tweak a little bit and some of the blends, but it is Brazilian. Um, so the the makeup and blend profile is the same, but uh, we're, we're not using the Arbaraca. 
but it is Brazilian. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Again, we got to keep some, some mystery, some things close to the vest, right? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Not trying to get you any trouble here with Chris. So I definitely, definitely don't want to Please do that. Don't. Please um, don't. But so let's go back to the torch line here, because I think you sent me all three samples here. And so this was something that kind of goes into um, just the, the foundation of the company, you know, the, the mantra, the, the mission statement, if you will, and everything. And uh, and so I wanted to pick up talking about it. It's centered around the torch, which was um, and this. And this was really interesting to me, Jason, because I was I was kind of just doing research for tonight's show and everything. And and I saw that uh, on the uh, that Veritas's mission statement or or tagline or however you want to call it was uh, not lifestyle. We're not about a lifestyle. We're about cigars. So everyone sells a lifestyle. We sell cigars. That's the that's the tagline um, that Veritas has used in the past and everything. And I got to be honest with you. This was really that really fascinated me because. When I think of the cigar lifestyle, and I said this to you before the show, when I think of the cigar lifestyle, I think of you. And and I, and I mean that as I mean that as a comp, as the compliment is, is it is intended because to there you know there are a few things I think about when I think about the cigar lifestyle and and what can I say, Jason? You 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 embody all of them. You know, hard work, drive, style, panache, swagger. I think that was a word that Chris to uh, termed uh, coined about you, which one of the things right. that about you, um, you know, all of it, you know, and, and so it was really interesting that, that now you're the CEO of a company that's, that says that everyone sells a lifestyle, but we sell cigars and I'm like, Jason is a lifestyle. So this is, this is, this is perfect. This is, this is really interesting how the two worlds are going to kind of come together and everything. So when, you obviously knew this kind of going in. What was the conversation between you and Chris like when you're like, well, you know, I'm, you know, did he want you to be you or did he, did he, did he have something else in mind when you guys got now, partnered up? First of all, I want to say that it's very humbling for you to, to say that when, when you hear the lifestyle, uh, the cigar lifestyle that, that I come to mind as yeah, you mentioned others as, as well, but um, to even be, be, in that landscape of, of people that, that come to your mind that that uh that makes me smile um you know i i, I love the fact that uh that you say that so so thank you for that well i mean 100 um, percent. so but when when chris and i were having discussions about me coming on board um that was one of them is like he he doesn't want me to, to change in any way he wants me to bring my style uh my art, the the creative that uh, that I have, um, and and mesh with what has already been, you know, established at, at Veritas. So he doesn't want me to change or alter uh, me or any way. Uh, wants me to maintain the the creativeness and then just kind of mold it into to what we're what we're trying to do, what we're trying to grow into, and what we're trying to be in in, in the future. Um, so it's I think it's a it's a great. Um, marriage of, of the two as far as like yeah we're, we're just selling cigars but we have somebody that uh, that's in the lifestyle of trying to sell those cigars so it's it's like this 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 combo effort um, yeah absolutely i mean that's the way I, that's the way i took it and i was like this is this is this is a match made in heaven this is this is yeah. perfect. Uh, so so let's talk about the, the you mentioned the artwork your art background is is well known uh, you are an artist um and uh you know if anyone wants to scope out jason's art he's got stuff on facebook and stuff it's really unique really colorful just really really cool pieces like i don't have i don't like i wish i had a better adjective to describe they're just really cool um so check them out and everything but um now and i don't want to give you credit for something you didn't do but the the torch label this this is this is not you it is not no. but but i but I find the artwork specifically interesting about the torch because there's there's a lot going on. There's a lot of nuance going on with this label. First of all, the name, right, torch, and then there's right. these, these hand symbols holding cigars, almost in, in in like almost civil disobedience, right? And then the 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 cityscape in the background with the red windows and everything. Have you talked to Chris about what the inspiration was behind this? Do you know the story? 
um, at all. I don't want to on the spot here, but I'm just I'm just curious because I, I really dig it. It's really cool. Right. Well, that's that's his neck of the woods, right? So the cityscape is is Pittsburgh. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not I'll hold that up here to the to the camera, but the the cityscape is is Pittsburgh, as you can see there. But you know, we haven't really dove into the inspiration of what uh, what made Chris want to to have this, but I believe that right now. In, in in the time and history that we're in right now, it's kind of poignant. Kind of shows, you know, that hand up in the in the air with the with the cigar and the, the kind of civil disobedience um, that that you um, brought to light there. Um, but I think it's more of like a, a unity thing. Um, you know, I, I live in Louisville. I don't know if we mentioned that yeah. in the podcast yet, but I live in Louisville, which is kind of the epicenter for uh, for some of the the social. Uh, injustices and, and issues that that we're experiencing i mean we can't gloss over that um you know and, and i feel like it, it doesn't matter um you know your your race or creed or religion or anything like that we're we're all united in in this you know thing that we like to uh, to enjoy in, in a cigar um i don't know how many stories that i've heard where you can sit in a cigar lounge and it doesn't matter who you're sitting next to um, what their social background is, what they do for a living. You can have the, the CEO of a company next to, you know, a, a janitor and it doesn't matter. Right. The conversations ensue between those people because of, of the love for, for the leaf. Right. And it, and it brings people together. And I think now more than ever, we need people to come together regardless of race or religion or, or anything. Um, pol uh, political, you know, it, it doesn't matter. We all, we all come together for this. Now, do those conversations uh, come out in those cigar lounges, in those perfs when people are getting it together? Great. Yeah, absolutely. Conversations happen. And I think, again, now more than ever, more conversations need to happen. And this is the way that those conversations happen. So I think that's really what that kind of, that, that hand with the fist and basically this, it, it it means to me um and I, I hope that in the future we can kind of again have those conversations between all people mm -hmm. and, and and be better for it sorry i'll get off my, my soap no please don't um because i think that's no because i th i think that's a a word that hasn't gotten tossed around as much as it should like we've we've kind of I don't want to say we've beat the dead horse on this but i think that is one of the true beauties of the cigar industry is the fact that we can all get together and it doesn't matter a race or religion or politics or creed or you know social class or whatever and even in with even with the, even with the recent events um even in within the cigar industry there's you know there's been some you know hotly debated you know political discussion between some between some folks and and that you know i don't want to get into all that but but i but i, I do want to center around the focus on the word that you just mentioned and that's conversation and that's something that I've said numerous times on this show and other podcasts is that I, I, I actually love debate. I, I, I enjoy it. The problem is, is that nobody knows how to debate in this world anymore and no one knows how to have a discussion and, and, and part as friends anymore. So I'd like to, I would like to come back to at least that Jason, what you just said, yeah. I'd like to come back to just, just, just a conversation, just conversations to where we can learn from each other, enjoy from each other and enjoy these you know, cigars are such a beautiful thing. Um, and I, I, you know, I went to, a, I went to a very good university and I consider myself an educated person. Um, but I can honestly say this in the, you know, in the, the 10 plus years that I've been working in the industry. Um, and in the last almost three years now of doing this podcast and over three years of doing Cigar Coop Primetime Special Edition, I have learned more, not just about cigars, but I have learned more about I've anything. I've been educated more in that time period based on my conversations where cigars were being had than my entire four years at the university level. And I think, and I don't think that's being over dramatic. I, I think I'm being pretty, pretty factual about that. And I think that that's, that's pretty remarkable when you think about how many different types of people I've talked to, how much they've taught me and just 
just by listening how much I've actually learned about a lot of different things. And, um, you know, if he, uh, he uh, the gentleman we were talking about earlier uh, around Autism Speaks, my coworker, Dan, if he's still watching, D Dan in particular, you know, has taught me a lot about a lot of different things outside of work, you know, and outside of, and outside of what we do. And, and we've shared a couple of cigars and, and that's, that's actually where it's uh, most of that, that education has happened. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that, you know, uh, then the, another another thing that get, kind of gets entered into this is age right you know they you know i've learned people from people that are younger than me and i've definitely learned from people that are older than me and i think that that's that's something else that kind of gets tossed by the wayside too is that is that you can learn from people of all ages about things and some of those conversations aren't the easy conversations to have you know but i think those conversations start um with with this cigar hopefully with this cigar that we're smoking right now right exactly exactly so um so actually i mentioned one of your art uh, your artwork and it, one's actually sitting right behind you too yeah this is this is a piece we'll talk we'll talk about in a little bit but yeah okay right okay there. okay so I'll, well fine if you want to bring it up later, that's cool that's good we'll you, do that you have curveballs so i, I i'm allowed a curveball oh, okay right? okay fair enough fair enough yeah see jason's a fan of the show he knows the curveball's coming at the end of the show um he's been, and he's also yeah experienced experience speaking of experience experience talks because you've been on the show before so so um that speaking of curveballs that leads us into our next segment which is uh, one of our most fun segments, right? It's and it's of course the one must go. So it's brought to you by United Cigars, featuring La Giana Havana, uh, and distributors of Jose Domingo's Bandolera, Garofalo, and the highly acclaimed Atabay and Byron lines. So smoke one today and start living united. Now, Jason, we this is a new segment. You didn't actually have you have not participated in this segment yet, and so uh, we explained the concept to you before the show. But for anyone that's tuning in fresh and hasn't been. Uh, hasn't been in the know of this. So I'm going to present uh, Jason with three things and he has to kick one thing to the curb. Now here's the twist on this, on how I handle this. I try every week to mold it around my guest in some way, form and fashion. And so um, knowing Jason uh, slightly as well as I do, I, I had some interesting, uh, some interesting observations. So um, as you mentioned, Jason, you're from Wisconsin, but you call Kentucky home. And there's a lot of things that Kentucky is home of and things that you've embraced of your adopted homeland and 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 I know that you enjoy and so I thought that this would be a really great exercise now I think I know the answer but I'm willing to be surprised so here are the three things without further ado you wanted to be surprised so here they are okay so okay. one of these has to go you can never enjoy participate or do these again if you if you know gun to your head or however you want to paint the scenario now obviously this is just for fun everyone don't freak out he's not going to give up one of these things okay so here we go. All right. So bourbon, as he takes a sip from his drink, is one. Okay. So bourbon is choice number one. Horse racing, specifically the Kentucky Derby, is number two. Okay. okay. Right. Fried chicken is number three. So one must go. And I'm going to participate too, Jason. I don't put everyone on the hot seat, so. Okay, well, I'm going to have to go with fried chicken okay. as, as the one that will go because um, although I am a transplant to Kentucky, I've grown very fond of the Kentucky Derby, Churchill Downs in particular. Uh, Keeneland's great. Keeneland's in Lexington, you know, it's 70 miles away from me right now. Um, but Churchill Downs, there's been so many great experiences um, and things that I've been able to accomplish both career-wise and, and personally at, at Churchill Downs. So that one's, that one's ruled near and dear to my heart. Bourbon, that'd be a tough one for me to give up too, man. <laughs> as we being in the cigar time. industry for, for 12 years um, and, and meeting the, the people that I've been able to meet, uh, doing events with distillers and uh, you know people like Drew and, and others. Um, that would be that would be a real tough one for me to uh, to give up. So, um, you know, one of the things that I lost was uh, when I went to Nicaragua was was 25 pounds, um, you know, through eating and and diet and stuff like that. So, 
uh, the, the fried chicken would be one that I could definitely give up because I'm trying to continue uh, that, uh, that, that gradual decline. You know, I'm trying to back myself into a, to a new wardrobe. You know, I'm trying to, to fit into stuff that I haven't been able to fit into for a while. Sounds good. So definitely fried chicken. Fried chicken. Well, th this was really hard for me because th these are three things that are really near and dear to my heart too, even though I don't call Kentucky home. And, um, and, uh, and it, 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 the decision was really hard for me, but it, the horse racing was the one that absolutely stays. I, I, you know, funnily enough, I think, I think that might surprise some people, not surprise the people who really know me, but that might surprise some people. The horse racing was the given, like this one's staying. Uh, right. Kentucky Derby staying that is part of tradition going back with me and my father uh, watching that watching that race every single year and getting into horse racing and really enjoying that and uh, we're going to talk about the Derby here in just a second too but now, have you ever been to the Derby? I haven't I haven't I am wearing uh -huh. my I am wearing my in honor of you I am wearing the Kentucky Derby 143rd running that I got this when I was in Louisville a couple of years ago yeah, uh, I remember. the conference yeah exactly so uh, I am wearing the shirt in honor of you, but I haven't been in the, uh, what the plan was um, is to attend the 150th running uh, with, with my, with my son. And uh, now maybe both sons will, will join me, but uh, that was the idea is to, to, to go to the 150th running here in a, in a couple of years. But um, the, uh, so horse racing was in for me, bourbon and can, and fried chicken were actually the most difficult. Cause I, I am, I'm really, really, really a huge fan of fried chicken. Um, and it all stems back to my grandmother, who's not from the South. Um, my grandmother is Mexican. And, but my grandmother, um, for some reason, got the notion that, that she, when she, you know, married my grandfather and started a family, that she needed to have a Sunday lunch that was very traditional uh, for American for some reason she just got this notion and so it was fried chicken every Sunday apparently and so she made this had came up with this incredible recipe for fried chicken I have not tasted any fried chicken like hers I won't say as good as hers I've had some great fried chicken across this country in various places um, but hers was so unique and so different and and so it, it, it's that is really nostalgic for me. And so I can always find another spirit that I can enjoy. Um, but I think fried chicken has its own class of just excellence. So I can always I can always find another spirit if I really had to. So if someone put a gun to my head and chose told me to choose, I think I would I think I would I think I would kick bourbon to the curb because I love tequila. I love rum. I like scotch. Um, I love beer. So if I really needed to have another alcoholic outlet, which I don't drink much these days either, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, stay relatively healthy, well, Jason, but I, I think that I could find another spirit um, as much as that probably pains every single buddy in my audience, because this is the cigar industry and we make no mistake about it. We are bourbon people. So, <laughs> but the good news is this isn't for real. So it's all good. It's all good. So. Right. And we gotta we gotta shout out some of these people that uh, that are making comments here in the in the thread. Yeah, uh, my boy Quinn is uh, is killing it in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's making some outrageous comments here. He said that uh, the Kentucky Derby is where we had our first kiss. It was a magical moment. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn, Quinn Nation is 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 by far one of the, you know, we, we talked about learning from people and stuff. He's by far one of one of the one of the more unique individuals that I've met in the cigar industry. I had the pr privilege of meeting him at Lazona Palooza a few years ago, right. and and, uh, and that there there's a man who is is who is I and I this term gets thrown around as kind of a knock sometimes, but I'm going to use it in in a, in a very complimentary way towards Quinn. He's a fanboy. But he's a fanboy of cigars in the cigar industry. Like there are brands, obviously, that he follows and that he loves and stuff. But he has so much love for so many people that he sp he spreads that around. He spreads that fanboy love around, and and yeah. and his knowledge of cigars and the the not just cigars. Like I mean, I don't know. You know, I haven't gotten it too in depth with him on wrapper binder filler talk. But as far as the people 
inside the industry. I think he probably could rival some of the top people about the people that he knows and the people that he has good relationships with. Like just right. a really, really interesting dude. So really, really. I know cool. Quinn. I know Quinn for for a long time, and uh, well, me and Quinn have we've had some uh, we've had some experiences together. That's for sure. <laughs> Not the uh, the magical moment at the derby. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, the, sorry. Yeah, we uh, sorry you missed or didn't remember the first kiss. I guess I guess that means you guys can't be together anymore. But uh, <laughs> um, but uh, Anthony uh, Anthony said that uh, Q doesn't remember meeting Bear at all if it was at La Zona Palooza. That's that's pretty, that's pretty funny. I I have to hand it to Q. Uh, as, you know, we were talking about Bourbon a second ago. Um, him and and Bill Ives, uh, formerly of Protocol Cigars. I man, I have never seen two people. Like and I've seen some I've seen some beer drinking in my day I really have I've never seen beer drinking at that high of a level, um, like ever. Like they started in the morning, which is like I've been around people who've drunk all day. That's fine, but like they weren't drinking Miller Light. I mean they were they were they were pounding some like heavy ABV, like heavy beers too. Like not just like the alcohol level, like like heavy heavy beers. And they were just doing that all day. And I was just like, dear God, I'm just tired looking at it. Like I, I, you know, I was, you know, I was chugging water in between, uh, in between half pints that I was going and they were going full pints of this stuff. And it was just, it was just epic, epic. So. Yeah. Q can put it down now. I'm sorry. I I heard somebody's feelings on here. So I got to, I got to uh, show Stuart Hamilton some, some love to Stuart's a, a great guy here local and, and we've done you know some great events together and hung out and smoked a lot of cigars and um, so I got I got a shout out to Stu too so can't leave him out and of course our boy our boy Coops on in, yeah on the thread too so we gotta we gotta shout him out absolutely a lot of great supporters of the show a lot of great supporters of you tuning in tonight so this is this has been fantastic so uh, so thank you Jason for participating in one must go so uh, so fried chicken goes for you bourbon goes for me oddly enough out of this trio and. Uh, and uh, so that was our One Must Go, brought to you by United Cigars, featuring La Giana Havana and distributors of Jose Dominguez, Bandolero, Grafro, and the highly acclaimed Atabay and Byron lines. So smoke one today and start living united. So really good stuff there. So speaking of the Derby, um, Jason, you were down in Nicaragua when the Derby took place. And, and oddly enough, the Derby did not take place and it was normally uh, supposed to take place. Uh, there were also no fans in the stands, no no gallantry, no you know the pageantry the pomp the circumstances all gone did you did you have the opportunity I mean, did you have the opportunity to watch it while you were down there uh i i did watch it um and how it weird was, was little, that it was a little sad for me it was a little sad because um now going back in the history that that i've been at the track and being the official cigar retailer for churchill downs in the kentucky derby and and doing all that set up and and the, the weeks long uh, events um, that start at the Saturday before the Derby and and doing all those setups and breakdowns and, and the, the people that uh, that I would do that with um, you know it really it really made me miss uh, that first Saturday in May now obviously it happened in, in September this year fortunately due to uh, the pandemic again um, but yeah it was a it was a little sad for me because it's such a special time. It's a special time here in Louisville. It brings so many great people to to our city, and it's uh, it, it's just a, a great party. It's it's great camaraderie. It's it's um, seeing friends that uh, that you normally don't see because you know that other industry guys, uh, friends of mine that I've had for years would actually come and help me. You know, with different brands like Sean Williams um, with Cohiba and. and you know, Lee Whitaker with Oliva and Josh Bentley with Altidus and Kyle Davis with Drew Estate, uh, Jeff Tunnell with Drew Estate, um, you know, Ben Pearson back when it was his territory, like all, all these guys were, were tremendous. Um, yeah, can't forget Rob Wilson with, uh, with Rocky Patel, Chris Carey with Alec Bradley. Like these, these guys were the reason that, um, that we're successful. Can't forget Jonathan Herring too with general cigar um but uh those those friendships those um relationships 
of those partnerships were uh, were huge for me. And, and I love the fact that those guys would really step up and really um, they, they put it all out there and they work their tails off um, because it, it is literally it is sun up to sundown and everything in between. And you have 30, 40 people deep in a line, um, you know, trying to get cigars. And, and it was a, uh, it was a great time. And it was, I really missed it. You know, I didn't think that I would miss it. I thought that, you know, all of the, the stress and, and how hectic it is that I'd be like, Oh yeah, it's a stress that I don't have anymore. Um, but, <laughs> now you got different yeah. stress. <laughs> right. Right. I, I did, I, you know, being really candid, I, I, I really did miss it. So. You know, not to be not to be uh, missed either, but uh, you you actually you know one of the many times of uh, at the Derby for you where it was actually uh, uh, commemorated in a recent publication of Cigar Aficionado. You know they do those pictures at the end of the uh, end of each issue. Yeah. Where you know, they have people who have gathered around around cigars and, and everything. And there there was there was my good friend Jason Lois with some of his cohorts and an unusual helper in the booth. You talked about all these people that were really that have helped you over the years and. But we can't uh, forget uh, one. yeah, I was going to say, uh, Mr. Mr. George Brightman joining you in the booth uh, there at the Kentucky Derby, helping you out. So, so George yeah, was slinging cigars with you, huh? He has literally been a, a, a blessing in, in my life. Um, he's, he's a mentor. He's a friend. He's family. Um, he is amazing. And all he wants to do is, is, is help. Um, me in my journey in cigars. He just wants to help me be more successful and, and to achieve and, and reach dreams that I that I have in this industry. And uh, I, I couldn't be more thankful um, for a person who has been a guide um, through, you know, trials and tribulations because, you know, not everything's, you know, unicorns and rainbows. Um, so, and he's been there uh, since 2015 through through every step and um, I'm so thankful for that man and it it was uh, it was crazy because I didn't reach out to George George found me and that was a super humbling experience um, in itself um, so that was that was that was amazing that uh, that he would come and take time out of what he's trying to do and what he's trying to accomplish um, and he would he would literally, he's the reason that I was sane during the, those weeks, uh, for <laughs> sure, for sure. That's awesome. That's, that's really cool. I, I saw that picture and I, I was like, you know, that was, it was really cool. Cause I was like, oh, that's, that's Jason. That's just perfect. And then I saw the people there in the picture with you. I was like, holy cow, <laughs> George Brightman there's singing cigars with you. That's fantastic. Yeah, That's so to preface that picture, I don't know if everybody is aware, but it was it was myself, George, um, uh, some liquor barn employees, uh, as well as Lee Whitaker. My yeah, my I was going to say Lee was in it too. That's right. Oliva. And it was after we had smashed the year before record. So the, the previous year we had sold one hundred sixty thousand dollars in cigars at the track. And then that year we sold 208. So we increased sales by almost $50,000. And of course I'm, oh I'm squirting champagne all over the place like an idiot. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it, what a, what a tremendous, like the, the week is so hectic, getting everything set up, trying to ensure that we have the right product in the right places that everybody has enough products, both, you know, lighters and cutters and cigars through the different you know uh, partners that we had there at the track um and then somehow selling all of those um by by the week's end it, it's uh it was crazy so yeah the uh it was actually lee's wife that took took that picture and That's awesome. to have all those those people there um you know, and uh, in a special moment, um, it was it was great. And then to, for Cigar Aficionado to uh, to put that in, in the magazine was was fun to see that. So. Absolutely, one fifth of a million dollars. One fifth yeah. of a million dollars in cigars. That's 
Mm -hmm. That's that's a year for some cigar retailers around the country, and you did it in yeah. you did it in one weekend. That's yeah, that's just insane. That's that's yeah. and you did it with a, a team as small as you did. That's right. crazy. Right. I mean, you had great help. Don't get me wrong. We're not we're not selling anyone short. I mean, but less. amazing help. The best of, <laughs> the best of the best. The cream of the crop. Well, that's that's awesome. Well, so, so you talked about George and how he's been so supportive of you and your dreams. So speaking of dreams, that kind of leads us into before I get, before I'm smoke this down and burn my fingertips on him. Cause I've been really enjoying this tonight. We're going to talk about your latest dream, which was, yeah, we talked about you partnering up with Chris and becoming part of the Veritas family CEO of the company now. And, but this has also given you, um, the dream that you have wanted, that I have wanted, that so many people have wanted the opportunity to, so few can actually claim, can claim, uh, can claim it. And now you're part of that elite fraternity, Jason. You've been a member of this industry for a long time, done incredible things, as we've talked about on the previous episode. And now, um, and now you, now you're a member of the elite fraternity. You have started your own, your own brand, uh, your own cigar brand and that's that of course a chateau manifesto and uh tonight uh we are smoking uh the castellum um so here is i'm down to the very end of this one but we'll show what the the full version of the cigar looks like uh is this a petite robusto that we're smoking what 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 is it that we're smoking tonight in its size so that's actually that that size will not be in production so Ooh, that is special. my nice <laughs> that is my first that is my personal um blend that you can only get at events by asking me for my own personal cigar so that's four inches by 52 ring gauge <clears throat> and we'll go into all the other Cast the castellum sizes but um castellum is an ecuadorian habano maduro wrapper and it's a cameroon binder with nicaraguan fillers so that oh, wow. size okay. yeah, will only be available. It will not be available for, for sale. It will only be a gift okay. from me to, to whomever asks for it. Um, the sizes will actually be these little short nuggets because Castellum means it, it's a short Roman tower. So kind of going on that whole theme of Chateau Manifesto and Castellum being the, the short Roman tower, the sizes are all going to be short little fat nuggets. So we have three sizes that will be available via the Fortlet, Keyhole, and Watchtower. The Fortlet will be three and one half by 60. The uh, Keyhole will be four and an eighth by 62. And the Watchtower will be four and three quarters by 65. Oh, okay. So, so big The Watchtower is going to be a torpedo, so that 65 won't feel like a 65. So it'll be, awesome. it'll be real nice. Yeah, that's the blend that you have right there, but um, is not the, the actual production sizes. So you have something real special there, Barry. I do have something very special. I have two of them. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to save the second one uh, to join. I want to light up a torch here in just a second um, to get the full Veritas experience here. But let's since we have the cigar here in front of me, it's full form. Uh, it, now, are the other Vitolas, you mentioned the Torpedo, um, mm -hmm. obviously would be different. Um, well, maybe, I don't know. Um, are they all going to have this this pigtail cap? Or, or, other other than the watchtower. Other than the watchtower, have, they will have the pigtail cap. They will all have closed foot, as you yeah. see right here. So you get that initial wrapper burst right mm -hmm. when you you know ignite the the cigar, which I really enjoy. Which also the torch has pigtail and, and closed mm -hmm. closed foot too. So as you're uh, as you're lighting, you know a normal. Um, open foot cigar you know you toast it and then put it to your mouth and smoke the cigar but i really enjoy a closed foot for the reason that you get that initial wrapper burst i just okay. I, I i love that um i think it adds a, a a different kind of um experience to to the cigar yeah i was going to ask you were you wanting to stay consistent um uh with, with kind of like what the torch was doing or was this something that this was a this was obviously a personal choice by you to because of well, your personal torch, taste torch is, Torch had already had done that coming to market, but that was directly in line with what I would want to, to bring to market as well. Okay. Um, so it just kind of made sense that uh, that both Chateau and, and Castellum um, have pigtail and, and closed foot. Okay. So um, 
I'm going to write up the, the torch of Bono right now, but let, let, continuing talking about Chateau Manifesto. So let's kind of take it back. I wanted to highlight what we were smoking tonight. Um, first of all, um, before we do digress off the Castellum, I, I do want to I'm really, I'm not a big gauge guy, but I got to say that I'm really excited to try this, this blend in other, in other Vitolas because um, I, I, Man, I thought it was I thought it was really fantastic. Now, how old are these cigars that you sent me? The the, the Castellum? Like I mean these would be this would be about sixty days old. Sixty days. Okay. Um for being so quote unquote young, I mean they there was nothing young. You know, we've all had cigars that have tasted young. There was nothing young about this cigar. This tasted to me like a cigar that had been aged for I throw another number at it. It doesn't matter because I mean, it just did not have that young twang to it. It, the strength is really good. Um, I would say that it's about medium body, medium to full in strength. Um, but it's not a nicotine bomb. It doesn't, it doesn't hit you. I really thought the retro hell was incredibly unique. It had this spice component that was, almost delayed so like i would retro hail and i would get some of these nice woody sweetness aromas and then on the finish the pepper came with it and it was really really unique something that i, I can't remember a time where that pepper because that pepper is usually what you what you get right on the retro hail almost on every time you retro hail you get spice typically right. um i've never had a delay like that right in it, it really really terrific now cameroon binder this that that explains the nuttiness that i got off the flavor component because cameroon, no, cameroon has a, binder is going to be with castellum right no that's what we're talking about the castellum yeah that's what we're talking okay. about right so i haven't lit up the the torch yet so um that that nuttiness is really good throughout the flavor of the cigar so you can tell that camera that that totally makes sense i wouldn't have guessed it um that's that's really good now um now the wrapper choice that you decided to go with on this particular cigar, what was it about the wrapper that you that you were really? Is it something you've been drawn to before? Was it just what you had available and you were just like, this is this is it, this is my cigar? Just a real big Habano fan, just a real big Ecuadorian Habano. It, there's just so many cigars in the market that uh, that utilize that wrapper that I've been drawn to over the years, um, and it's one of those cigars. I feel that uh, because, you know, everything's real subjective, right? Everybody's palate's different. Right. Whatever they ate or drank that day or, or over the course of time will, will impact the, the cigar's overall flavor, right? Um, but Ecuadorian Habano is, is that real workhorse that I feel when you put a real nice blend together uh, with that wrapper that uh, you can really accentuate um, some, some very nice notes that are very pleasing and easy to smoke. I didn't want it to be something that was abrasive to the senses, but I wanted somebody to enjoy the cigar and to really just get that overwhelming kind of calming and enjoyable state. Um, have those, the, the Cameroon kind of shows through in that, that sweetness, but then you have the spiciness too. There's, you know, we have a little bit of that, that Esteli in there. Um, the, in the filler that, that comes through as well. That's what you're experiencing on that retro hill there. Um, but I, I really enjoy that blend. And, and I believe that that, that, that cigar is, is really going to impress some people when they, when they get it in their hands. Um, oh, I, was, I certainly was impressed, Jason. And not for your benefit, just because you're on the show. I, that was, you know, I, you know, I was... I, I, I was concerned just about because the age, because I knew that these were new and I didn't know if I was going to be, I, I knew you weren't going to send me crap. So I knew that I, mean, I knew it was going to be good. Uh, I had, I had, um, I had a high expectations for it because I know your taste. I know, I know you you have an incredible palate and it, 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 it Jason, there's no other way to say it. You delivered, man. It, it, it is, is, I'm really excited to try the other Vitolas. I think it, it is truly a unique blend. Um, and, but I don't think it's so unique that it will polarize any cigar smoker. Like I think, I think any cigar smoker can go to this cigar that wants a little bit more, they want a little bit more of a fuller blend. Yes. You're probably not for your Connecticut smokers perhaps, but 
but for your medium to full bodied smoker, which, you know, medium bodied smokers, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the world that, uh, you know, the, the, we live in now. I mean, yeah, the Connecticut sell like crazy, but I mean, most people can enjoy a medium bite cigar. And, and I think, I think you, I think you nailed it, man. This is it, it's fantastic. Really well done. Really, really, really. Thank excited. you. Thank you. I, you know, you're the, uh, Hey, you're the first person to smoke this live, which there you go. That's, that's the, that's the number one. So, uh, this is a huge, um, deal for for me personally because you are enjoying that cigar and it's really been enjoyed by me and just a few people you know chris and i smoking it in the factory stuff like that but uh uh very thankful that uh that you enjoyed that cigar uh jason i'm honored sincerely i had, i had no idea i mean i knew i was probably one of the first yeah <laughs> um, you, but I... you are the first to smoke it live wow I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing it with me and uh, really excited for things to come on that. So, so let's kind of take it back a step for a second. Let's talk about Chateau Manifesto. So um, now I was, I was also, I was also privy to this a little bit as you were kind of working through and building this conceptually a little bit, you know, you, you kind of, you, you pulled back the curtains a little bit and let me into some of the way things you were looking at. And uh, um the packaging um, and the the logo and the of course no surprise your artistic background really shining through be- beautiful beautiful artwork and everything so but uh, you know take us to take us through the name why why Chateau Manifesto what does that mean to you you know why what what are we uh, what was the uh, the the concept of building Chateau Manifesto the the concept is actually just staying true to tradition. Um, kind of going back to, to the roots and, and really just focusing on the, the tobacco itself um, and letting that speak. Uh, you know, the, the packaging, the boxes are going to be very, very plain and, and minimalist. They're going to be, you know, cabinet wood, you know, uh, Spanish cedar style boxes um, with the cliche, you know, burned uh, logo on it. Um, but it's really going to be focused on, on the tobaccos and the, and the actual enjoyment aspect of it. But what Chateau Manifesto means to me is I'm declaring my passion and staying true to, to tradition while manifesting our own destiny. So I, I'm really passionate about those traditional aspects and then bringing that into the future and, and giving, giving people those kind of experiences. The band is more minimalist. Um, it, it's really just about the, the the leaf and focusing on that. And then, again, talking about those conversations, right, that we were speaking on earlier. Mm-hmm. Concentrating on the leaf, having those people sit down and have those conversations in cigar lounges, hearths, events, what have you, but really focusing on on the traditions that, that got us to this point. Um, and and paying homage to those and and really paying homage to to people um, like like George Brightman that have been in in my life uh, for the last five years and and people like Jose Blanco and and people that have devoted their entire life to to what we're being able to enjoy right now. Trying to take those tidbits of of the people that have, have poured into me the the people that that I've learned from that have forgotten more about tobacco than what I know um, because I I am not a master I will I will never be a master this is this is something that is unattainable unattainable to me um, but I will continue to strive and continue to learn and continue to try to apply what I've learned and what I've been taught by these people that that I consider icons uh, of our industry and just trying to humbly um, put it in a package that I feel really pays tribute to, to all of that. You, you, you mentioned several times, Jason, paying homage to a lot of different things, you know, your process, your journey, the people that help you brought you there. And I, if you, I think an homage that you kind of left out on that is, and it might've been uh, subconscious or, or not, but, you know, you know, Veritas, you know, is, the name of the brand that you now represent is uh, 
stems from Chris's uh, uh, high school motto, which is uh, Veritas sin timor, which translates to uh, truth without fear. Right. So I, I think y y you pay homage even to that as well. You know, y yep. you know, that's why I think that the marriage works well together. That's that's really that's really awesome. So like um, when. And that was something that I was. Uh, I was I was really interested to see was how because again uh, you know with some of your artwork there in the background there and I've seen some of your artwork before like I said it's 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 just, I really wish I could come up with a better adjective it's just really cool but I was really really I mean I was on pins and needles about the cigar I knew it was going to be great like I said I know you have a terrific palette and I knew you were going to deliver on that end um, but I was really anxious to see what you would do as far as the branding was concerned because you have this artistic background. And from what I've seen so far, what you've put out there, um, you know, really, I, I think you achieved everything you just said. I think the, the, the branding is really clean. It's very, it's, it's very traditional, but at the same time, it's not blasé. You know, um, there are a lot of traditional brands and branding and companies in this, in this great industry sure. uh, that have, they're able to rest on their laurels because they have that foundation. But you, like you said, you, you're you're paying homage to that, but you're building on top of it. It is there. It's it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I think I, I'm really. I think this will this will pop in a humidor. I think it'll speak to a lot of people. And uh, I think you've I think you've really you you've really found something there with the, the way you branded decided to brand it. I think that uh, while staying true to those traditions and and putting my own spin, both creatively, artistically, on top of it. I think we have landed on some things that'll be really special. And again, can't wait to, to get it into people's hands. So when is uh, the, gonna be the, when is gonna be the launch of, of Chateau Manifesto? When, when are you planning on launching it or, or bringing it to market? I'm hoping mid to, to late November. Okay, um, so uh, just coming up with, quick. With COVID and, and all of that and, and issues with, with shipping from Nicaragua into the states and um you know that's that's been uh, an issue for not only us but a lot of other manufacturers that are based in you know both nicaragua honduras uh, the dominican you know, is getting those those cigars to the states so um that is our that is our shoot for um time frame but you know i can't really speak to how customs is going to react when they get these cigars or, or what have you. So that, <laughs> right, that's of always course. a crapshoot. You know, manufacturers, you know, I've, I've always, in the, in the past lives, I, I've always been like, man, why can't we just get these cigars? And it can't be that hard. Well, <laughs> I've learned a, learned a lot in the last couple of months, as far as like how, how hard it actually is when, when manufacturers are like, well, this is the launch date. Well, it actually gets to the States you know, a month or two months after that. So um, fingers crossed that, uh, that those, that that's the time frame. but, you know, we, we can't uh, foresee everything, you know, as far as those shipping and, and those obstacles that we'll have to, to overcome. But sooner, sooner is better for me. So, cause, so how many lines are we talking about? So we, we smoked the Castellum. Is the Castellum the, the, the lone uh, release right now, or are you releasing several other lines? So Castellum and Chateau should be released simultaneously. Okay. And can you, can you divulge anything about Chateau? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chateau is a U.S. Connecticut, uh, Ecuador and Habano binder, and then Nicaraguan filler. Oh, it's also wow. going to have pigtail and it's also going to have close uh close foot just like the castellum okay but there's going to be more sizes and traditionally castellum in the sizes has has been tweaked obviously those are not traditional sizes um but in chateau manifesto the sizes are 100 percent traditional sizes so we go over the sizes yeah so what we got so we got robusto toro i'm assuming right or no, we're going back to the roots, man. Okay. Going back to, going back to Marieva, going back to Magitos, um, Legito number five. I actually have a Legito number six that's coming to market, but it's not going to be called Legito number six. It's actually going to be called November Novia, which means Novia is, is girlfriend in Espanol. And that is when my girlfriend Ashley and I first started 
stay date was in November, November 26th. Oh, okay. So I, I initially was going to call that CR 1122. And then George is like, you can't do 1122. And I was like, why can't we do 1122? He's like, to me, it's like one of the worst days in history. Is when JFK was assassinated. Good call. Like, well, we definitely, <laughs> we definitely cannot, um, we can't utilize that date. I never want to to bring those kind of memories um, into into the fold. So um, we chose uh, November Novia uh, as the the name for for that cigar. So for people who may not be familiar with the the, the sizing components of it, first of all, I'm so thrilled to do that you're doing a Mar Marieva. I was. I said this to you before the show. I said, if, if you're, if, you know, I was, as you, as I knew you were building this brand, I said, if Jason doesn't do a Marieva, then, then, then he's completely lost it. So like, so obviously you haven't, so that's good. So yeah. for, for, for background on that, before you kind of go into the sizes here, Jason, for, you know, for those who are not aware of one of Jason's many, uh, you know, accolades on his incredible resume in the cigar industry he is a, a former uh, american smoking cigar champion and has participated in the world cigar smoking championships um and what that's that that uh, amazing competition is um predicated on smoking the marieva cigar that size specifically uh and smoking it for as long as possible without uh without ash falling off and then smoking it for, went to a certain point and then smoking it for as long as possible uh without it going out I, a challenge that cigar coop and i uh partook one time with you having uh guested on that show with us and um anyone out there who thinks they can just do this they are sorely mistaken it is an incredible challenge uh i think I think if I'm not mistaken, I think I got 32 minutes into it. Coop would just beat me. I think he was at 30, 38. I think he was a couple minutes shy of 40. Um, before our cigars went out, we were we were smoking it pretty slow. And even then, I was you you even commented a couple of times how I was still smoking it too fast, and mine still went out. Um, that's how that's how challenging this this exercise was. So for point of reference, Jason, what's your longest time on the Marieva size? Well, longest recorded time is one hour and 58 minutes. And that's when I won <laughs> in 2015. And that time put me uh, number four in the world. Wow. Okay, so... That's with a cigar that's five and one-eighths by 42 ring. There we go. That five and one-eighths by 42 inches. Oh, he, he nursed that for two hours, everybody. For two hours. Kept it lit. No relights. No touch-ups. No, 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 uh, breathing, through, no smoking through the cigar. Yeah, it's, it has to be a, it has to be a pull every time. Um, two hours, just shy of two hours, everybody. Yeah, go ahead, give it a shot, see what happens. So, so these the other thing is about that is that the band is actually fixed at nine millimeters. Remember that. So, you can't pull the band off. It's not like I have roach clips and I'm smoking it till it hurts. You actually have to smoke it to the band. And if you ignite the band, then that's a 15 minute penalty. So it's it's not like you're smoking it down to its utmost end, you know, like nubbing it out. That's that's not part of the competition. It's literally dancing on the verge of it staying lit and going out the entire time. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So so uh, so you gave us the specs on Marieva. So uh, the Magicus, what's the what are what are the what are the numbers on that? Four and a half by 54. Again, all traditional Cuban sizes, right? Okay. Um, so we have the Legito number five, which is a five and five eighths by 54. The Pyramid, which is a six and one eighth by 52. And the Legito number six, which is a six and a half by 56. Six and a half by 56. And that's the, the Novia Nove November. Correct. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. November Novia. November Novia. Excuse me. I apologize. Yeah. Um, well, it's terrific. Some fantastic sizes uh, for this blend. And that that blend sounds really, really terrific as well. So really excited to talk about that. So you, you, so you, we've talked about the many people that have helped you in your journey here, Jason. This is the time that I want to talk about. And you already mentioned this gentleman a moment ago. And that gentleman is Jose Blanco, uh, the mad professor, as he is nicknamed, uh, uh, an incredible blender in his own right. Um, and now with uh, Arturo Fuente, um, he's spent time with other amazing blenders 
So now he's with Carlito and that historic family, but he's also worked with uh, Ernesto Perez Carrillo. He's launched his own brand. He uh, vaulted uh, La Aurora, the uh, the oldest Dominican factory in the Dominican, uh, to to national acclaim with uh, a streak that will probably never be bested of top right. ten cigars and cigar aficionado uh, top twenty five list well, during his tenure at La Aurora. Um, but this is a man who was quoted as saying, this has been public and then also in private conversation as well, um, that he says of you that Jason is, has one of the most impressive palettes and knowledge of tobacco that anyone he's, as in anyone he's ever worked with. Now, considering some of the people that I just listed that he has worked with in his illustrious career, and not, not to sell short his own amazing accomplishments, when you hear that, Jason, what does that, what does that mean to you? I don't, I can't even um, fathom it. To be truthfully honest, the the man has been in this industry longer than I've been alive, and for somebody that has had the experience, the knowledge, worked with the amazing people that he's worked with in this industry, to even be mentioned in in the same conversation. Um, is it's almost unbelievable to me um but it just showed like he's just the he's such a great person and uh and i love jose long he, he's he's an amazing person i, I can't uh, can't say enough good things about him and i know that you're a, you're a huge fan uh, of him as well not only in his impressive and illustrious career in cigars but him as a as a person so um yeah i just i really i i love that guy he, he's amazing the thing um the thing that i really like about jose i like a lot of things about him but one of the things that you know even though we just talked about the amazing compliment that he gave you jose and speaking of in true veritas form he's he's, he's, he's incredibly honest yeah. he'll, he'll tell you exactly what he's thinking he's very frank He'll also tell you what he thinks about of a cigar with, you know, I mean, he's tactful, um, but, you know, he'll, I mean, he'll tell you how he feels about it um, without any qualification or anything like that. So um, it's one of the things I really appreciate about him and, and, and for him to say those words about, about anybody, like I said, it, it, it's, you, you, you sit up and pay attention. And so with knowing that now that you are launching your own brand, and this is a man of incredible accomplishment that has said these amazing words about you. I, I have to imagine if I, if the situation was reversed, if I was so blessed to be in the fortune position you're in, Jason, the the pressure that I would feel personally um, would be just unbearable. Uh, not to be too punny, um, but it would just be. <laughs> I I would I would just I don't know how I don't know if I could handle it. Um, so with that in mind, and maybe, I don't know if you had that, you kind of put that pressure on yourself or maybe the pressure came from a lot of different ways. As you were kind of hunkering down and you were building these blends and Chateau and Castellum and everything, what were the challenges that you faced and what were some of the things that you learned about your own palate and your own process um, for the very first time as you were, you were finally putting pen to paper and tobacco together to find the blend that truly represented you. you. You realize how extensive the process is. Um, you realize that uh, it's not just your palate that you are considering. You, you want uh, you want people to enjoy the experience because that's why we smoke cigars. Like we're mm -hmm. we're not, you know, um, we're not getting a nicotine fix we're not we're not smoking cigarettes just for that 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 hit and then you know go about your day or whatever it's it's all about the enjoyment of the cigar and i thought about you know somebody taking their hard-earned money and and buying one of the cigars that i had put together and and i thought about like I, I wanted to make it worth their while mm -hmm. to sit down and actually 
enjoy something that, that I created. So I put a lot of thought that way into what would the masses like to, to enjoy. Now, obviously I had to personally enjoy it um, from, from my standpoint and, and putting those tobaccos together had to be something that was in line with what I was trying to create. But I wanted, I wanted people to like it. Mm-hmm. I wanted people, you know, I, I'm, I'm not in it to get some awards and all that kind of stuff. I, what I really truly want is just people to say that they had, they enjoyed the experience because I believe wholeheartedly that that's what this is all about. It's an, it's about an experience. Um, so that's, that's really what hit home to me most of all is as I'm smoking these test blends in the factory, all encapsulated in, into what we were doing is are people really going to enjoy this cigar? And that was always in, in the back of my mind as, as we were putting these together. So I'm really excited. Again, can't wait to get it in people's hands. Um, but yeah, that's, that was in the, in the forefront. So we talked a moment ago about like, one of my concerns was like the, the cigar being young, just considering how, how recent you blended it and everything. You know, from a from a creative standpoint, as you're smoking samples yourself and kind of going through that process and everything, how how and, and just because I've never had the opportunity to ask anyone this, how do you how do you how do you navigate that? Because as you're smoking test blends, you're obviously smoking cigars that are young. That's not what the full potential is going to be. Like, how do you how do you navigate that? Luckily, I've. I've had some some great experiences in, in other factories, right? Where we were smoking components, pachuches, whatever you want to call them, the leaf individually on it on its own, and being able to catalog those those flavor profiles, um, being able to sit down with people like William Ventura and and Hanky Kilner, and and like learning from from icons, learning from George, learning from Jose. Um, and one of the things that really was instilled in me by, by George was when you're smoking the cigar fresh from the rolling table is don't fall in love with that cigar right then. You have to smoke it right then, but then you have to wait some time to smoke it again. And then you have to you know, visualize in your mind how, this, how the tobacco is going to progress, how it's going to taste differently 30, 60, 90 days out, how it's going to taste differently when it actually hits hits the states because there is a difference from when I smoke it in the factory from when the experience will actually happen in, in the U.S. or, or any other country. Um, so through some exercises that, that George and I have done over the years with, with various other cigars and different tobaccos, it's having those cataloged experience on 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 what I had smoked back then, and then what I had visualized the brand to to taste like, the, the different flavors and profiles, and then how I can bring that to, to the marketplace. So it's having all of those thoughts and processes um, and, and those life experiences, and then being able to apply them into a product that, you know, is, is variable, right? Because the, the different uh, growing seasons, different tobaccos, um, you know, they, they change o- over time. So absolutely being able to put all those together and, and put it into a, into a package that uh, is acceptable to, to the cigar enthusiast, to the cigar smoking market. So what's, um, have you, have you worked out the price point that these cigars are going to be at? Yeah, the price point is going to be, you know, that 10 to, to $14 range. Okay, so for for both Castello and Chateau, yeah, okay. Castello is going to be more of the nine to nine to twelve and a half range, and obviously that's that's variant on the the state and their their individual uh, OTP course. tax and stuff like that. So, what do you have there in Texas, Fair. Um, I'm 
I'm actually not that privy into how much the like the the markup goes into it and everything because of tax. But uh, I mean, our, our our Texas is very favorable overall in comparison to like other states that are really bad. Like Michigan is really awful. Massachusetts, yeah. Ohio, Arkansas is actually surprisingly high. Uh, right. Texas is pretty favorable. Um, in term, in New York just got raised. California. Yeah, New York just got raised. Cal well, California is always raising it. Yeah, California is a monster. Actually, they came down a little bit. Came down like five points. It was like 63 or 64 and a half. And I think they brought it down to like 59. Of course, that's not a huge, but at least they were trying to there you mitigate go. it a little bit, right? So. Yeah, Texas is near the bottom, if memory serves correctly. When it, like you look at the overall, I, I've never really looked at pricing that uh, that closely. Didn't, in that mean, didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but. Oh no, it's totally fine. No, absolutely, uh, and and I apologize for my ignorance on that. Um, I I know I do know a few things about it. I've just never been at the purchasing level about that to understand it. Um, is as heavily as some like other retails, like I'm sure Jay uh, in our audience can uh, uh, illum illuminate us on, but. Uh, um, oh, thank you. Skip Martin in the chat, uh, coming in clutch like he normally does. Uh, 1.1 cents per cigar in Texas. So like I said, close, definitely, definitely near the bottom uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to our, our country. So that's, that's good. Um, you yeah, talk about another guy that's super knowledgeable and, and doing great things in Nicaragua. I was able to, to, to go to Skip's factory and kind of check it out a little bit. And uh, and he's got a he's got a beautiful place. So, how you doing, Skip? Hope you're doing well. Um, I I will say this: if you decide to expand internationally, get ready for that twelve dollar cigar that you're bringing to the U.S. market, and watch it go up to about sixty dollars if you go into Canada. Right. For the right. same cigar. <laughs> um, which is just that the pricing difference in Canada, where my that's where my in-laws live, is just unreal. It's crazy. Um, yeah. A uh, speaking of. Uh, Jose Blanco, a Hemingway short story, um, you know, that retails somewhere between 650, 750 here in the States, sometimes high as eight, depends on what state you're in. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just shy of 40 bucks. It's just shy of 40 bucks in Canada. It's crazy. It's just nuts. That's, that's insane. <laughs> it really is. Um, so kind of going into, you know, with all of this in mind, um, Jason, as far as you, de you know, developing this brand, creating this brand, everything that kind of leads us into some of the what I call the obligatory questions, which is, you know, recently the FDA decision uh, by uh, Judge Menta to basically put off for uh, an indefinite time a substantial equivalence and everything and, and a kind of huge sigh of relief for cigar companies but this is particularly for for veritas you know being founded in 2011 this had to be uh this had to be a very welcome news for you all overall from a company perspective correct very very absolutely um you know that fda is has been that uh that dark cloud in the in the sky of the cigar industry something that's been you know Nobody really knows what their intentions are other than the fact that they want their hand in it in some way, shape or form. Um, do I believe that, uh, that there are some things that should be regulated? Yes, but I don't believe it should be in a way of like uh, of a monetary uh, impact to the consumer or to the manufacturer. Maybe, maybe regulated in the, in the way of um, uh, like the actual tobaccos and stuff that uh, that are put into the cigar, but I don't think a, a monetary value should be should be put on it. Uh, maybe like what wine says, you know, like if you have a if you have a cab, like how much, you know, uh, what are the the varietals and how does that equal to a blend or something like that? I think maybe that would be that would be great. Um, but other than that, the, all of the the regulations and stuff. Uh, it's it's really been uh, that that dark spot in the industry that that people are consistently trying to figure out what what in the world's going on and and what's going to happen for the future of our of our industry. No, absolutely. So I think very positive that that that, that that's been pushed off. That that companies like ours can can continue to uh, create and come out with new things, um, you know, in this in this time frame. So. I'm excited. 
was this launching of the new factory um I'm, again i'm sure it was welcome news to you and chris and everything but the the launching of the new factory and everything bringing you on and now with the launch of chateau manifesto was the the was this just you know the the good news that you all needed were you guys going forward regardless at the time or you know what what did that, that what did that really mean for you when that announcement came down because it was about the same time when you guys started when you guys went down to nicaragua and started working um you know that was about the same time that happened so i don't think it was y'all were necessarily waiting for something but uh, i mean but uh where how did that play into the the plans uh, for you guys moving forward with everything we were moving forward but it was an obvious relief you know i mean when when you have a an organization that's trying to like deter things um, creatively and, and new new items from from occurring um, when when that gets pushed off or like it's almost like that weight was lifted and we're like all right now we can really really dig our heels in and, and create some 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 real special uh, cigars and, and uh, it, it was it was definitely definitely a relief so obviously you're launching your new bl- uh, brand um, so, so I mean, I, so I, I think this question has has a little bit of obvious answer to it, but I'm interested to get your perspective outside of Chateau Manifesto and outside of Veritas. Do you think this decision, you, you've been a part of this industry for a long time, Jason. So from your perspective, do you think uh, this decision will allow other boutique brands to come to market and expanding of, of existing brands uh, in the foothold of the industry? Absolutely. I think that that's what makes this industry beautiful is creating new concepts, creating new blends. Um, you know, it, it, it's the freedom to create. And, and that's why, you know, the, there are so many different manufacturers that, that utilize uh, some of the same items, but they, they use those leaves in, in different ways, or they, they have a different method of how they procure the tobacco, how they ferment it, um, how they roll it, like all of those things together is what makes each individual company different. But then what also makes our, our industry one that, what, that is beautiful, just like a piece of art, like, like what I try to create on a canvas. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was inhibited by, by an organization saying that I couldn't use a certain kind of paint or, or do it in a certain kind of style, it, it, uh, it doesn't allow for that 100% creative freedom. And um, that's just, that's just bad news for everybody. I couldn't so I imagine. That, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I believe that uh, the companies that have been doing this long before us will continue to innovate and try, try new ways um, to, to put cigars together, create new blends. And it'll continue to, to grow um, our our overall industry in a, in a very positive direction because it was being inhibited, it w- which would make it a, a negative direction where all the big boys are able to continue doing business and, and the little guys get, uh, get left to the wayside. So, yeah, I, I think it's very positive. I can't imagine an entity telling you as an artist what kind of paint to use. Or what kind of canvas to use, or kind of right. medium, and that's a great that is a great comparison and a great metaphor that probably hasn't been used, at least I haven't heard it. When you're talking I think we about, we just came up with it. Yeah, I think we just we started something special right here. Barry. There you go. Mark mark the date and time. There you go. I, I think it's and I think that's a I think that's a great point because you know we 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 tout and when I say we the cigar industry touts itself on on this artisan craft, this, this, it's an art, you know, it's, it's, it's art. It's the, there's science mixed into it as well, but it's an art. And so for, you know, how could, how could anyone restrict the, the creativity of that art? It'd be like saying, yeah, like to telling a painter that they can only use acrylic or telling a sculptor that they can only use plaster or, uh, you know, it's just, there's, there's just only so much that can come out of it. There's only so many ways you can skin that cat. I mean, as it is, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I would say naysayers about the cigar industry that say that like, Oh, you know, everything's been done. And, 
And I wholeheartedly disagree with that because as you mentioned, this is several times during this interview, Jason, that this is a vintage product with different tobaccos and different years and different seasons. And, um, you know, it's this constant, uh, it's this constant balance and, and, and battle of, you know, being able to produce something at a consistent level at a high level consistently over the years, but also, you know, moving with the ebbs and flows with the creativity, creative process to create unique cigars um, and everything. So I think, uh, I think that's great. Yeah. Mark the date and time. Cause that's perfect. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to take, we're going to take dual credit on that. If that's okay. Sounds great. <laughs> one, one tidbit to add to that is, is creation is how we grow both personally and, and career wise, whatever you want to say, but, but creation is how we grow. So if we have, an entity that is trying to stunt that creation, then then it's it, then then it's going to die. So we have to continue this art form because, like you said, it is it is that it is an art form. Being in the factory, seeing these skillful hands create something from nothing, um, taking this plant um, and and making it beautiful. It's it, it's a it it makes my heart happy. <laughs> So, Jason, I've got two more questions, actually one and a half technically, because it's technically your question um, before we close out the evening. But before, when I always get to this point in the interview, I, I, I always thank our guests uh, for the time that they've given us on Sunday evening. Um, you've been away from home for uh, two months. Uh, you just got back. Now you're going to be on the road again soon, launching this brand, working Veritas uh, and bringing it to, to successful prominence. I'm absolutely sure. Um, and so, so with that, I, I, I appreciate the time that you've given me tonight, you know, away from that wonderful girlfriend of yours, that uh, beautiful daughter of yours as well. Um, you know, family means a lot to me personally. And so for you to sit down for a couple hours with me on a Sunday evening uh, really means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity well, to talk I'm, with you again. I'm humbled to, uh, to be a part of it yet again. And uh, I believe we will absolutely continue this stretch of, Hopefully not annual. Maybe we'll do it a couple more times uh, throughout the, throughout the year. I actually have an idea that just came to my mind that we we're talking about with the chateau and how we had the Marieva and, and how Coop and yourself and, and I smoked and we we're doing the the cigar smoking world championships kind of mock cigar smoking world championships. I think that we should get on a podcast with Coop and we should take Chateau in the Marieva and then again try to do our own variation of the cigar smoking world championships i think that that would be great i i i don't want to speak for coop but i think we could probably work something out i think that is a stellar idea i will fail miserably again you will definitely win um no doubt but i i i will try to get in some practice this time and and i try to work through it but uh um i'll send you a couple for uh for practice perfect perfect i love it so i think that sounds like a fantastic idea we should do it so here's my half question uh jason before we lead into the last question tonight which is our curveball question so the half question is you teased something a minute ago about the artwork behind you so mm -hmm. you said you had your own curveball so i'm going to give the floor to you what is what is this curveball jason what are we what are we talking about with this uh, gorgeous art piece behind you so we've been uh, really focused on, on Chateau Manifesto and Castellan because those are the headliners that are coming to market um, uh, that, that I've created. And, and again, underneath the Veritas umbrella uh, and all the other Veritas great cigars that were you know, coming back to market with 412 and Veritas Maduro and Three Blends and, and Torch Connecticut Albano and Maduro. Um, some of the other th things that I've been conceptually working on and, and through blends and stuff that we've created in, in Esteli is a, is a brand called Fort Knox, which is, you know, it's obviously I live in Kentucky. You have the building of Fort Knox spelled K-N-O-X. Mine is spelled K-N-O-C-K-N-S. So it's like okay. the hard Knox, but it's the Fort and it's this, let's see if we can, Forgive me for trying to get this into frame here. Hold on one second. No, take your time. This is like, I, I like my, it so my, far. We've seen my fur blanket out of the way because it's like 36 degrees here. Uh, 
this is part of the conceptual art uh, with the fort, and uh, you'll have Fort Knox written in uh, in graffiti letters over top of, of the oh, fort okay. dripping down, and uh, you know I had the little the little general, which will be one of the sizes, and uh, the tank will be another size. And down at the bottom, you have the gold bars, which is 14K, which will be another size. So those three sizes will be released underneath the, the Fort Knox umbrella. And then also we have um, two other lines, uh, Truco de Sombrero, which is hat trick, and then um, Remedy, which um, back in Prohibition times, um, you know, bourbon, which we got to go back to bourbon, right? Right. Bourbon was written as prescription for headaches and aches and illnesses and what have you. So remedy is, you know, going to be your cure for, uh, for all of those, those ailments. So, um, but those things will be, be coming to, to market um, later this year, if not, you know, early 2021. That's awesome. I love the Fort Knox concept. I love the fact that the money bags have more than just dollar bill signs. There was the, you had the yin there and the, yeah. the, the, yeah. the pound sign, true, right. true international uh, uh, money maker there. So that's, that's really cool. I really, I really, I really dig it, man. That's going to be awesome. Really. We have cool a global, see. we have a global market bear. We gotta, we gotta, you know, appease all, all markets, my man. There you go. There you go. That, that is awesome. Well, Jason, it comes uh, tonight for the uh, the uh, the curveball question for the evening, and and uh, um, just to bring everyone into and to be completely transparent, um, my curveball question was thrown out earlier <laughs> uh, because of some stuff that we were talking about in the green room before we start tonight's broadcast. So this is glad why I'm, why I'm always thankful to talk to people before we actually go live because then I don't embarrass myself, but. I all am in the spirit of Veritas. Let's be honest. I, I I had a question, but we had to toss it. So I, I came up with another one, and I think it is I think it is appropriate, um, considering the journey that not only you've been on, but that we that you and I have been on um, over our time and our relationship and everything. And so now we've come to November of 2020. So a year ago. Um, we talked about what you were doing with the, the Derby and with uh, your retail or, uh, aspect, but there was this desire and this hunger in you even then to to build your own brand, to 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 live the dream that you're now living. So, so let me let me ask you the honest question. This isn't really a curveball, but I, it's a two parter. So the first question is a year a year removed now. So did you think it would be this, that it would be possible and be possible this soon? Uh, to be truthfully honest, that uh, no, um, this is, this is not just a, a dream that was from last year or a couple years ago. This has been a, a career long dream of mine um, because I love to create the, the art aspect um, my experiences in this industry, I, I wanted to to put myself out there because that's what I do day in, day out with, with my art. I've been an artist my entire life. Um, so, so to be able to take two passions of mine and, and put them together in, in a way that, uh, that gives me my, my freedom, gives me my release, um, I think it's, uh, it's a beautiful and amazing thing. And, and a year ago, I didn't, uh, I didn't know if that was ever going to, uh, to happen. Um, so, so, you know, Chris has given me that ability now underneath Veritas to, to be able to grow Veritas and also to grow these other brands that, that we're trying to make. So, um, it, uh, it's, it's fulfilling for me to get to this point because this has always been the pinnacle for me um, to get into the same realm uh, of the guys in the industry that, that you have on this podcast week in, week out, um, you know, to, to be those, the, the faces of those brands. Now I've been able, um, I've been blessed 
and, and lucky to create things in, in the past and bring them to market. Um, but they were never fully mine. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and this is, this is something that I feel real deeply about. And, um, again, can't say enough that I'm super excited to, to get it into people's hands. So here's the second part of my curveball question. Now you get, you are ultimately living the dream. As we said, you got to do everything that you've sought out to, you get to be part of the creative component, the packaging, the marketing, the art, aside from the art of creating the cigar. And you're part of that too. So you you got the whole package, okay? Now, if I had said to you, Jason, before this process started, I said you could only have one. I can give you the freedom to create. I'm gonna give us. I'm gonna create a cigar, but I'm gonna give you the, the the ability to create the marketing, the packaging, the art behind the art of creating the cigar, or I'm gonna create that piece for you and you get to create the cigar sophie's choice right but right. which but which would you choose well how that is a curveball bear um you know, not bad I, not bad for on the fly right by the way wow that, that is on the fly and that is that is a curveball man you really you really got me there that's uh that's something that, that, that requires, to, to give you an answer to that, that requires a, a lot of deep uh, introspective uh, thought there. Um, you know, I, I, could, I could have done either of those, um, but I still don't think that I would be 100% fulfilled by doing just one aspect of those because I've, I've done that here and there and, and given tidbits and and my influence through experiences one way or another. Um, but again, it wouldn't have been that 100% fulfillment where I'm able to, you know, create the whole, the whole kit and caboodle, you know, to, to create um, concept and, and to create blends and, and create the packaging and, and the, the overall story uh, of the cigar. So I could have done either, mm -hmm. um, but it, it just wouldn't have been, just wouldn't have been all me. Mm -hmm. And I think that in, in cigars, when, when it's authentic um, from a manufacturer that, hey, this is, this is me. You can like me, you can not like me, um, but this is, this is putting myself out there. No different than, than when I create a, a piece of art it's, it's putting, putting yourself out there. Um, one of the most uh, stressful and, and scary situations for me personally on the art side was to, uh, to paint in, in front of a crowd. I did that a couple years ago, one of the, the derby, um, pretty cool kind of party things um, was to, to do this huge canvas on an eight, eight foot by eight foot canvas in front of a crowd downtown Louisville. And uh, it was actually benefiting this, this neighborhood. Um, and they were actually gonna transfer the art around. And it was kind of like trying to build up this art, uh, you know, area downtown Louisville. And uh, it was super stressful because I, here at home, I can take a piece of canvas and I can have a concept in mind and I can start creating. Um, but all you ever see is the finished product. You don't actually see like how it started and then maybe it morphed into something else. You don't get to see all of the mistakes that I made along the way Yeah. Um, where I saw it one way in my head, but uh, conceptually when I put it on canvas, just didn't work out. You don't get to see all those things. I know that they're there. I see them, but when you get to appreciate the art after it's complete, you don't see that. You just mm -hmm. get to see and appreciate the, the finished product. Um, so that that right there is like super scary to me. Yeah. But when you see the, the finished product, that's the fulfilling part. So I'm applying that to, to cigars. And now I'm able to, to make all the mistakes in the background that you don't see to go through all the trials and tribulations 
to make blends that may that they don't work out. Maybe I, I found this amazing leaf that that I really was excited about, but it didn't work out. You don't get to see all those things. All you get to see is the is the beautiful um, after. Right. I don't normally answer my own curveball question, but this would have been an easy question for me to answer. Um, and that would have been create. I would love to create the cigar and someone else could create the packaging. But to your point, Jason, I think you bring about an interesting point because I think that as I was thinking about the answer to my own question, I, I think you, you, you painted a very, you know, a great point in stark relief. The fact that if I was to create a cigar, if I would ever have the great opportunity to do it. And I handed that cigar over to somebody else, even if they were incredibly talented. Let's just say you, okay, for the sake of argument. If, even if I handed that cigar over to you and I said, okay, go, right? There's still such a, even as talented and as incredible as you are, there's still such a strong semblance that you could miss the point. You could miss what I was trying, what I had envisioned, what I, what I wanted out of it. And, and to only do halfway would be a kind of a disservice to the whole process. And that, there, there are people that are successful at this. I mean, there are brand owners that don't have the opportunity that you do, right? That they get, they don't get to create the cigar. They just to get, get to create the, the marketing behind it, or they get to create the cigar and they don't get to create the marketing behind it. So it, it it's interesting. Um, it's an interesting exercise. And I think, I, I think you bring up a really interesting point in stark relief, as I mentioned. So, you know, even I, even though I still would give that answer 199.9 times out of a hundred, well, let's just say it, I'd give that answer a hundred times out of a hundred. I'd, I'd still let someone take it over just because that's just not my bag. But, but I think that that is kind of frightening to see what, what someone could take of your hard work and execution and, and could ultimately, uh, could ultimately let it down. I mean, let's just be frank, you know, even, yeah. even with talented people like yourself, they could, could handle that. So that's, that's a, that's a, that's a really interesting answer. So, um, so thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for your time, Jason. Incredible, incredible spending another evening with you. Really, really appreciate your, your, your honesty, your candid nature, uh, your creativity, your, your passion, um, you've been one of the most interesting people that I've gotten to know over the years um, within the industry, just because your journey is so, is so vast and everything. So I, I I'm really, really thankful for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you um, for allowing me this opportunity to, to speak um, my passion and, and to show my passion on, on this platform. Um, you know, you speak of, of my journey in this industry and, and I think that, uh, that all things happen for a reason. I think that if I was given this opportunity 10 years ago, five years ago, that uh, it, it wouldn't have been the same. I, I wouldn't have had the same outcome. Um, I think the, the trials and tribulations, the experiences that I've had from both uh, small retail, large retail, um, from, from, you know, being the face of another brand, uh, being a broker, all of those things uh, along the road have have given me um, life lessons and experiences in this industry that uh, that I, I couldn't have paid for, um, and I'm super thankful for them. Uh, they were not all pleasant, um, but there's been some amazing people that have been put in my path, and you're one of them. And I appreciate all that you do. Um, and again, thank you so much for, uh, for allowing me this opportunity. Well, uh, Jason, I'm humbled by those words. Thank you. And uh, to our audience as well, thank you all for hanging in there uh, and enjoying a wonderful evening and a wonderful conversation between me and Jason. Uh, this has been a fantastic interview, fantastic take. Really anxious to really see what uh, what Veritas uh, does under under you and Chris's partnership, and of course we're all on pins and needles with uh, with Chateau Manifesto and Castello, and we're really excited about that. So uh, get on your horn right now and talk to your retailers, everybody, because because uh, Jason's coming at you with an incredible cigar. I've smoked uh, I've smoked the Castellum. Really excited for Chateau Manifesto. Uh, and he's coming at you full force with uh, growing Veritas uh, into a uh, dominant brand in the boutique market. So uh, get on the phone now, guys.
give him this, give this man your money, as they say. So uh, really excited to have you on again, Jason. Thank you so much for everyone out there. We really appreciate all those likes, shares and comments. Our audience is truly, truly fantastic. I really appreciate all of my listeners as well. Uh, whether you tune in on Facebook Live, don't forget to also subscribe on our YouTube channel, which is El Oso Fumar. Upcoming guests are on our Facebook page, El Oso Fumar, which is where you're watching us now. But if you are listening on podcasts, wherever you happen to listen to podcasts, whether that be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to podcasts, be sure to download, subscribe, and review. If you already are a subscriber, I encourage you to unsubscribe, but please, please, please don't forget to resubscribe because that really helps my numbers so they can continue to bring on great guests like our esteemed guest, Jason Lois tonight. Um, we do appreciate all of those and leave a review. Tell me if I'm awesome. Tell me if I suck, but just by God, just be honest. That's what we always ask. And I really do appreciate everyone out there. This was our 143rd take. Done 143 of these. This is incredible. Wow. And uh, so we've got some great takes coming your way. Next week, we'll be celebrating our third anniversary. Yes, I've been doing this for three years. And Tim That's Wong, right. Tim Wong of Pier 28 will be on again. He was my very first take. He was on my first anniversary, my second anniversary. And I told Tim, as long as I have an anniversary show, and as long as he wants to do it, he will be my guest of honor each and every year. And I'm really excited to welcome Tim back. That'll be a fantastic show. Uh, we've also got Justin Andrews, Sam Spencer, Alec and Bradley, and Alan Rubin, and Nick Perdomo, all coming up in some upcoming weeks. Take Stay tuned to our Facebook page for dates and times. Well, it's always the same time, 930 Central, 1030 Eastern, every Sunday night. We'll see everybody. And guess what, everyone? Live from the HF Barcelona studios of Euless, Texas, I'm your host, Barry Duplissy, as always. See you next time.